Hello, and thank you for tuning in. My name is Russell, and I'm from the website for Chits and Giggles. And today, I'll be playing through a game called Dice City. Um, this is by a guy called Vangelis Bagiartakis. I hope I did that name just... Oh, hello, Lightner. Thank you for joining. How are you doing today? Um, yeah, so I'm basically playing through Dice City, um, which is designed by this gentleman here and published by Artipia Games who are a Spanish um, board game company and um, yeah I've had this since it came out I've played it a couple of times but the thing is I've never really tried the um, the uh, solo mode and I again it's one of those games that's been in my collection and I didn't even know it had a solo mode and sort of till it came up um, to lockdown and I was like I need to find some solo games to play so yes this will be fun however I will state this right now at the beginning this is one of those games that has a mode oh you're well thanks for asking first time joining excited to check it out thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to join me in this gameplay so yeah this is uh, very exciting for me as well because uh, I get to play a new game I'm just gonna check that I have uh, this Okay, there we go, it's fine. I was just worried that my um, camera thing hadn't been uh, set up right. Anyway, yes, so what was I saying? Yes, the only thing is, fair warning, uh, this game is one of those solo games where you're trying to uh, sort of achieve a certain number of points in the game to win. So that is ne not necessarily my thing, um, but uh, I like the look of the game. I like the sort of mechanics the game uses, and I think this kind of rolling the dice in each of them, having their own row is kind of neat. So um, I'm going to be teaching you how to play this game, and then I'm going to do the sort of regular version of the rules first, and then I'm going to explain how you play it in solo, and then we're going to get stuck right in. So uh, yeah, unless anybody has any questions for me, I'm probably just going to get stuck uh get started with the teach um but yes hopefully uh this this uh kind of setup looks all right on camera i think it's all right actually usually i'm a bit concerned because my camera's not that good so uh yeah that might not be as best but hopefully this one's quite nice and clear to see um from the thing at least you will see when i change over to the view which i'll do right now there we go so there we go We've got the board game uh so this is the board um, these are all the various sort of cards. There's uh, buildings, which are the most of these cards. In fact, these kind of this kind of column here and all of these cards are buildings that we can build onto our dice city. Um, oh, let me know how the volume is as well because I haven't really checked it. I've got some background mu music going, but uh, I want to know if the sound is all right. If I'm too loud, too quiet, because I can change that for you, no problem. Yeah. So then those are the buildings, and then these are kind of uh, well. There's one column here which is bandits, and then we've got one column here which are trade ships, and we've got army here as well. So these are going to weigh. These are going to sort of be ways to help us um, win the game, essentially. So uh, yeah, let's let's teach you how to play this game. So first things first, this game. Is is going to usually take um, uh, a, a number of rounds, uh, which is usually when some stuff runs out, but ultimately the game takes place over several rounds where each player is going to take turns uh, resolving actions, so doing actions, and then after everybody's done all their actions, then you, you do some end game stuff and then you go into the next phase. Uh, the game um, has kind of four phases in it. And the first one is the using dice step. So what we'll do to set up the game, because I haven't done it yet, is we're going to take all of these dice. Every player is going to have their own board, which is actually quite large. If I mean, if I use the, my hand there as scale, this board's not sizable, so it does have quite a big table presence. But we'll set up the board by just rolling the dice, and then we place that dice on the matching coloured row on the numbered column. So the four there, the five here, a four here, a five. Wow, that was a uh, nothing below a four. Uh, nothing below a four that whoops that's not right so that's how you set up the game and kind of um the board's made up of several uh like rows and columns and buildings are on each of these spaces so these these buildings can give you stuff or give you an advantage or stuff um oh yes the game the goal of the game is to get the most victory points victory points come in the form of these stars here you can get victory points just from building buildings in your city uh, but you can also get victory points through other ways by using the buildings themselves as well so yeah at the end of the game after however many rounds it is until the end of the game is triggered then the player with the most victory points wins so that's how that works okay uh oh one thing i need to do is make sure yes okay good i'm just checking you can't see that in the camera anyway uh yes yeah, so basically the first step you'll do uh in each uh, on your basically one of the things you do uh is your use dice step so uh actually it says here the starting player takes the first turn of the game when they finish the turn yeah so everyone's every turn consists of um uh, uh using an action okay so the first thing you're going to do um 
Actually, wait, hang on a second. Sorry, I've just realized. Additional notes, attack, building, end of turn. Yeah, okay, fine. Yes, okay, so this is fine. So basically, every turn is going to be made up of four, uh, four phases. The first is a use dice step. So basically, wherever these dice are, you can use any of these dice that are still on your board by taking it off the location and then doing one of the following things. You'll always remove a dice from the board. The first thing you can do is to use the location of the dice where you've just used. So for, uh, if, for example, I took this dice here, I could use this mountain building and that simply gets me a resource, which in this case is stone. Okay, um, there are very many, um, and if you can see all around the edges of the board are all the sort of resource generating locations. So there's three types of resources in this game. Well, technically there's more, but three main resources. You've got stone, you've got wood, and you've got sort of iron. And these are represented by these tokens here. So all of those buildings generate resources. The, the second kind of building you've got is army buildings. Um, now there is a regular army card over here which can be used to sort of like add to the board. But the, these militia and the regular army both do the same thing. They generate sort of like swords for you to use um, to do various things which we'll get to later on. Because there's a separate uh, step which is the next step called the attack step. So if you use um, swords you can use those during the next step of the, of the, of the, of the turn. Uh, so these basically just add some swords to for you to use during the attack step. The third type of building are the blue buildings, and these kind of allow you to manipulate the the dice um, or, or the position of the board. Um, the fourth type of building are the purple buildings, and these ones are generally about gaining points. Um, they generally help in various ways, but there's they're mainly about sort of points. And in fact, if you look on here, the houses are the only ones that get you victory points. And when you gain victory points, technically not a resource, but you still collect them. You take um, the tokens here, and they just go into your personal supply. Uh, there is another type of building here, and these are usually about sort of tr um, trading or whatever. But there's y there's yellow buildings as well, which which will come across. Um, but yeah, so those are basically when you take a die, you can use the building underneath and just follow the instructions on the building itself. Uh, the second thing that you can do if you take a dice is to move another dice. So if I took this off, I could use that to move one of the other dice, either one space to the left or one space to the right, on its own uh, row. So you cannot wrap around. So if I if I wanted to use this blue dice, for example, on the red one, I could only move it left. I cannot move right because there's no space there and it doesn't wrap around. So that's another thing you can do on your turn. The third thing you can do is to get rid of um, all of the cards on the, one of the rows in the... Um, it, yeah, discard four of the location cards in the display that are, are available, to available to build and reveal new ones. So if you don't like anything here, you can actually use a dice just to get rid of them and then hopefully get something else. The solo rules are slightly different, but for a general game, you take four of those cards, discard them, and then reveal new ones. The fourth thing you can do with a dice is to reactivate a used location. So when you use a location in this game, it's used up, right? Um, now, if I had that, I'd put that little thing on there to say this has been used up this, lo this turn. But you can actually use a dice to reactivate it. For example, it might be more beneficial for you if you, um, you know, want to reactivate a location. Oh no, sorry, that's a lie. The only this only counts when the act when the when the building has a activate location ability. So you see this little symbol on the card. Oh hi um hi uh, uh Bladio and hi Tom. Thank you very much and thanks for joining. I uh, hope you're all excited about this game. It's a very nice, easy game to learn. Um, and I'm kind of a little bit rusty on the rules, so I'm getting through it. Uh, but if you have any questions that aren't answered by the end of the teach, like, feel free to ask, and I will happily help you. Um, but yes, yeah, so there's yellow buildings, and there might be other buildings as well. Yes, for example, this catapult building also has a activate ability thing. So you can use it, you can use that building, but once it's used, you place this token on top of it, and then... The only way that you can activate it again is to use a dice to sort of remove that token. And then if a dice is on it later on, uh, you, can react, you can use that building again. So these are kind of locked off for you until you, um, until, you de until you reactivate them. So that's another thing you can do with the dice. Uh, the fifth and final thing you can do on your turn is to gain a pass token. So if you don't want to do anything or you can't do anything useful with your with your turn, you can choose to pass and take one of these little um, uh, rusty... I, <laughs> I didn't even know that's what I did, but I'm going to use that in future for sure. Um, yeah, so these little tiny little... Uh, time tokens these are called pass tokens and you can use these to give yourself like extra abilities later on it's important to note that with this ability passing 
uh, sorry, using a dice just to gain a pass token, as well as the removing cards from the display. Those can only be used once per turn um, on your on your turn, so you can't keep churning those out. And uh, pass tokens uh, are an extra way to do actions on your turn. If you have a pair of them or multiple pairs, you can always, in addition to your using a dice step, use two pass tokens to do one of the following three things. You can either choose a resource of your choice. You can take iron or stone or wood, and you can just take it. Uh, the second thing you can do is increase your army strength by one. So if you wanted to, you know, bump it up because you needed to get a certain amount, you can actually use pass tokens to sort of bump those up. And the third thing you can do is to force other players um, to re-roll one dice of your choice. So I can say, right, I'm using two pass tokens, you can re-roll red, you can re-roll yellow, you can re-roll yellow, and then they have to do that. Um, so it might affect their plans, and that's kind of like, you know, a bit of aggressive move in this game, but that's how it is. Um, guys, by the way, if you're watching, if you want to let me know what sort of games, what you've been up to, are you okay, are you well, and uh, are you looking forward to sort of playing any games soon? I'm just all ears for that kind of stuff. Um, meanwhile, I'll just carry on with the teach, but I'll be jumping into chat as uh, often as I can. Uh, yeah, so basically, that's what you do on your turn. Uh, the first thing you do on your turn is you use a dice. You may use pass tokens at this point, And then you go into the next stage, which is the attack step. So, uh, the attack step is using army strength, and as you see, there are ways to increase army strength by um, using red buildings, as well as using uh, your regular army, and there are other cards in there, for example, there are a whole bunch there that kind of add army strength to your, to your turn, but you, you don't get to sort of like keep this, because there's no resource for that, instead you just need to add up that what you've gained this turn, and use it to do one of the following things. You can either attack bandits, there are multiple bandits, um, uh, Tom said, I've taken Thursday and Friday off this week just to mentally re reset, so I'm looking forward to that. That's a really good idea. I think it's actually very wise always to take time for yourself and look after yourself. And uh, I, I often think these, these days, if you are still working, um, you are not going to have like, you know, an epic holiday unless you use them all at the beginning of the year. So, you know, you should probably be thinking about how you can use those holiday days and do things like play video games, play board games play solo board games, and even just like follow your sort of creative passions. That's certainly what I've been doing. Um, not that I've been working, because um, I've been on furlough, but I've been using this opportunity to try new things like this. So yeah, definitely a good idea. Oh, Lighten Up says, streamed Dungeon Academy last night. It's a pretty fun real-time roll and write from the op. You know what? I feel like I've heard of that game. Is it the one, is it like the one with the sort of like gold or orangey bordered text? I feel like I've seen that and it's got like a cartoonish look. I feel like I've seen that. And is that the one where you roll all of the dice into the middle and you're trying to create a path through the dungeon to defeat monsters? Because if so, I think I saw that on game night. Um, Bladio says, uh, same situation here. We're going to borrow a friend's cottage this weekend and get away for a break. That sounds amazing. Um, where is that cottage? Like, is it is it like is it like a proper rural um, place? Because that sounds delightful. And I'd love to join if I. <laughs> That's not me inviting myself. I'm just saying I'd love to do something like that myself. Like go to a cottage um, and basically just take like a long weekend and just chill, read books, play games, you know that kind of thing. So that's really good. Uh, yeah. So we're talking about attack step. Uh, you can either use it to attack bandits. Bandits have a different varying um, number of defense, and and uh, you can basically choose to defeat them by simply um, having attack strength equal to the bottom left. So this one is three. There are also fours and fives in the in the deck as well. You can also attack opponents' locations. So if I wanted to attack something, uh, you can choose one or more locations on an opponent's board for which you have an army. Uh, strength equal to or greater than the defense strength on here. So all of these boards on here, they can't be attacked. But once you start building buildings, you see how they've got like defense value. This one, for example, the Great Wall has a defense value of five, which thematically makes a lot of sense. Um, then you can you can uh, place a deactivation token on that building. So in, basically, if somebody wants to sort of use that building again, they're going to have to spend a dice to reactivate it. Um, uh, but then you also gain victory points from the supply equal to vic that location's VP value. So it is worth attacking an opponent's building because you'll get victory points for doing so. So yes, this is a very aggressive style game. But you cannot attack a location that's already deactivated because you can assume there's nothing there to attack and so on. Um, the third thing you can do with attack strength is take an opponent's resource. So two attack strength 
um, gets you an opponent's resource and then you take it. So uh, on the lake in southwestern Ontario, looking forward to some relaxing sunsets. Oh man, if it's on a lake, one of my friends in Canada actually has a lake, um, lakeside cottage, or at least his dad does. And I remember going there the last two years and honestly, it's so fun. Like he's got a boat, so you just go around and sort of like chill out uh, on the lake. And then he's got like a little kind of... Um, like a jetty, so you can just sun sunbathe on that, and you can just, sort of, they have their giant inflatables, which just go there with a, with a floating cooler, and let you just drink beer while chilling out in the sun on the lake, it's very nice, so yeah, I'm kind of jealous that I don't, I won't probably get to do that this year, which is sad, but you know what will be worth it, when we get back to traveling again, that'll be one of the things I'll be doing, um, so very much enjoy yourselves there, that's awesome, um, yeah, I should check out Lighten Up Stream, actually, I might go back and watch it after I finish this, uh, anyway, carrying on with the teach, the third step that you do is the building and trade step. Okay, so you are allowed to build buildings. Um, each building is available in this um, building sort of row here. Uh, there are actually two rows, which we'll get to why that's important because of the um, solo mode. But all of these eight buildings are available. And if you want to build a building, you simply spend the resources on the top right of the building. So this one, for example, requires two wood and one iron. And you can build it anywhere. You can build it absolutely anywhere you see. If there's a dice on it, you can build it there. If there's another building there, you can build it there. But you have to discard the building underneath. So you will be building instead of something but yeah once you've built it then the next turn you can use it if obviously your dice lands there so that's basically how that works um and uh yeah the uh, the trade step you can also now trade with the trade ships as well so that's fairly self-explanatory build it spend the resources build it however you can also spend resources to trade with the trade ship so here's for example um the trade ship there's three there's one that's worth five victory points one that's worth 10 and one that's worth 20 and each of them require um sets of all of the resources so this one requires three sets of the resources the five victory point run requires two sets of the resources and the 20 victory point one requires four sets so if you have you know 60 sorry 12 resources lying around and you can trade with the trade ship that's worth 20 points that's very good uh, especially when i tell you how you win the solo mode so that'd be useful okay uh you can build as many resources uh, so you can trade um with as many things or uh build as many buildings as you like during the game and uh, yeah, now in normal game, once you've built a building, by the way, immediately gets replaced with a deck uh, card from this deck here. But in the solo mode, it doesn't work like that. So yeah, that's then that's all. That's the third step. So building and trading. And then the fourth. Oh, by the way, these buildings on the left here uh, are, are always available. There's multiple copies of them. And they're kind of upgraded versions of the regular um, resource buildings. So you've got the quarry and the mine and the lumber mill, which all give you two resources of its type instead of one. And you've got the regular army, which is basically just two strength instead of one. So they're all mostly upgraded buildings of these. Uh, the next thing is uh, the end of turn step. Uh, if you have any resources remaining that you haven't used um, in terms of building and trading, you now can only store one of each type. Okay, So you have a maximum capacity of one of each type of these resources that you can keep on uh, the end of your turn. But you are allowed to keep any number of pass tokens. There's no limit to those. Uh, yes, then you roll all of your dice again at the end and then you just reposition them. So you roll them all and place them on the matching colored uh, row and the matching number column. So that's that's that. Uh, it says here also additional notes, um, pass tokens and all the resource tokens. Basically anything here is considered infinite. So if you run out from here, then you are always you know able to get more. You're not limited by the number of tokens you have in the game. So that's that. Uh, the end of the game occurs when one of the following conditions is met. Uh, either all of the cards have been taken from the three bandit piles. Okay, so you'll you'll set those up depending on the number of players. Similarly with the uh, trade ships as well. Uh, oh, sorry, no, two or more trade ships. So when all of the bandits are gone or when two of the trade ship piles have run out. The third situation is when two or more rows that's these rows here, in a player's city have been filled with built locations. And the final way that uh, it can run out is when the location deck runs out of cards. So that's it, and then after the end, you do final scoring, you add up all of the building points, and you add up all of your victory points from tokens here, and then basically the player the most wins the game. In the case of a tie, the player with the most cards built is actually the winner. 
And if there's still a tie, uh, it says the player with the most victory points from trade ships and bandits wins. So that's the uh, that's the multiplayer game. So it's actually not a difficult game to learn at all. But let's talk about the solo differences. So in the solo game, my goal is to get 50 victory points by the end of the game. Um, I'm playing on normal mode, but if you wanted to play on hard mode, um, there is one. Um, but basically, the only difference is you burn through buildings a lot more in the hard mode. So how the solo mode differs is we don't have piles of bandit cards or trade ships. You simply have one of each type, and they're always available. And if I do... If I do sort of like trade with a ship or, or or defeat a bandit, I just take that number of victory points from the supply here. So I shouldn't run out of those. Uh, the other thing is when the end of each turn, there's additional thing which you have to get rid of all of the bottom row of cards and then replace it with any odd cards in the top row. So they sort of slide down and then you refresh um, with cards from here into a new top row. So you'll kind of have a constant stream of cards. There's 60 cards in the deck and there's four getting rid of each turn. Uh, so there's actually a maximum of 15 turns in the game. There is actually 15, because if you take a, a building in the solo mode and you build it, it doesn't get replenished. So whatever cards are left here, they get discarded and then you'll move the top row down. So you can um, you can kind of have an idea how much time there is left in the game. And like I said, my goal is simply to get 50 victory points um, in the game. Um, as far as I'm aware, that's the only difference with the solo mode. Uh, you set up the game as normal, yes, the solo mode, blah, blah, blah. Uh, whenever you build a creation, yes, that's fine. So that's literally the whole the whole difference. So it's actually quite easy to grasp. I'm going to leave the rule book there because I'm a little bit rusty on this game. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's the game. So if you have any questions, anything that's not making sense, um, let me know. I also have a nice um, dice step reference sheet here which comes with the game, which is actually really good and really useful. So yes, uh, okay, so we'll begin the game. I've already set it up by um, placing these dice. So now, just looking at the board for my first turn, um, I have the ability to get three stone uh, if I want. Uh, do I do I start with any resources? I'm pretty sure I don't, but I'm just going to double check that. Um, set up resources. Uh, you know, it doesn't say. I don't think I get anything, which is uh, which is fine. Okay, so yeah, no res no starting resources. But yeah, here we go. So I've got the opportunity to get three stone. Um, I could shift some stuff around and get something else. But looking at the buildings, there's this great wall. Uh, which basically says um, that it gives me it gives me three victory points, but it's more about protecting myself. Now in this game, there's no nobody after me, so it's actually probably not the best idea to go for um, buildings that are about defending myself because there's nothing to to benefit um, when I do that. So maybe I should think about using some of that stone to build a quarry um, that costs two stone, but it will generate more. Um, so I think that's probably the best option. So yeah, I'm going to use this. Where do I want to build it though? I may be in this row here because I think you're more likely to um, be able to move on to a middle space as an edge space. So yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to use this to gain um, one stone. Uh, now in this situation, I don't have... Um, is, it, is it better if I maybe just move this board up a little bit and then I'll keep my resources down here so you can see them. You can see what I've got. Okay, so th I'm not, I'm not going to attack anybody. Um, I'm not going to build anything because I can't yet and uh, there's nothing to resolve in terms of the end steps So let's just go straight on and do another turn. So I'm going to use this um, again. Actually, I could re-roll this dice uh, Re-roll this die. Oh, so I hang on a minute. Oh So this one basically allows me to manipulate where it is so I actually use this ability just to re-roll it So yeah, I, I actually get to re-roll this dice from this building. That's a bit thing I didn't explain. So yeah, these this building, the Traveller, is kind of like a, like a free space. So it's more likely to land on these spaces just because it's next to um, one of this. So I could put a really useful building on here, on here and that will basically help me. So yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to re-roll it. Two. Okay, so we're going to add on the army instead. That does give me two army strength. And that means I can actually, well, I can't actually defeat a bandit, <laughs> but yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with that, but maybe we can, um, you know, I don't know, manipulate the dice or something, I don't know. Um, okay, so let's do this, let's let's take this, I'm going to use this dice, I'm going to gain this, I'm going to gain this stone, and now I'm going into the attack step, again, don't have anything to attack, but I'm going to use these resources in the build step to build myself a nice quarry. So this will generate more resources um, for the same. Now, where to build it? Um, it could be nice if um, I don't need army so much. Well, I mean, I, I will need army in the sense that I want to defeat bandits 
um, because they'll give me victory points and essentially like free. So uh, yeah, I probably will be building a, an army or something. But for now, it's no good to me because even if I, I'd have to roll three dice onto the army spaces just to be able to defeat the, the cheapest bandit. And to be honest, the trade ship is the best way of gaining points. So I'm going to build this. I'm going to cover up one of the army spaces. And you know what? I could use it sort of now. So I could actually do this. Uh, I could place it on here. And now I can actually use that next turn. I just want to clarify that I am allowed to do that. Uh, when you build something, uh, choose a location and spend resources from your stock according to the location's cost. Uh, take it and place it anyway on your building. You may even place the new location on top of another card. Only the top card is considered in play. Yeah. Yeah, it, I mean, it doesn't say... Yeah, so it doesn't say anything about not being able to use it. So I think I'm fine. Okay. Um, hello, not yet. Again, thank you for tuning in. How are you doing today? Um, glad to see you again. And this time, as you can see, I'm paying attention to chat. I'm not ignoring you. And uh, yeah, Tom, Tom says hi as well. Um, awesome. Yeah, I'd love to know how you're doing today. So yeah, I'm going to build that. And actually, you can use it straight away again. So why not? Let's, let's build this and uh, activate this and gain two, um, two stone. And you know what? I could build another quarry right now. I could use it right there um, to build to build here. Yeah. And I can just keep a stone later. So yeah, that's actually working out quite nicely. Uh, then uh, this one, again, don't see any reason to, to keep that right now. Um, so maybe um, maybe I could use... Oh, I could just gain this stone. Yeah, let's just, let's just gain this stone. So two more stone. And then, uh, annoyingly, I can't really use this. But I'm fine with just... Um, Actually, uh, I think if I was to basically... Oh, uh, doing good. Thanks for asking. Hopefully it's a nice ramp down in the week for everybody. Yeah, um, I uh, celebrated um, the 14th of July yesterday, uh, aka Bastille Day, um, the big French sort of holiday. And uh, we had raclette. And I don't know if anyone even knows what raclette is, but it's a, um, it's kind of like where you have a hot plate uh, with, uh, with like a, with like a, a grilled little little pans underneath it so you put on the top you put like some meat sometimes well in in my my partner's um version of raclette you don't put meat on the top you just put mushrooms and stuff um and then underneath you put like cheese raclette cheese uh which is basically underneath and it melts and then you have like potatoes and we had potatoes with a little bit of like rosemary and um, you can also have like uh, cooked meats as well. And then you basically pour the cheese on top of it and eat it. And it's so unhealthy, but so delicious. So yeah, um, that was my last night. And we're obviously drinking as well. Played a board game as well, which was nice. So it's, yeah, it was a good night to be fair. And I'm not feeling too fragile or anything today. So <laughs> the hat is actually part just to hide a bad hair day that I'm having. So um, yeah. All right. So uh, we'll just ignore this. We can't do anything with it. So we're just going to use that. Oh no, actually we can use it to get a pass token, which is what we'll do. So we're getting a pass token. So the end of the round now uh, is basically I have to get rid of one of these because I can only keep one resource of each type. But now we roll the dice again. So oh, uh, but first we get rid of all of these. I didn't really want to build any of those anyway. Although I could have potentially built this one. Pay up to three stone or iron when you build grand statue. Get one resource for each resource paid. Well, that would have been nice, but it's too late. So then let's move these down. And then we're going to reveal some new locations. I really make try and build the bazaar this round because that's pretty good. So you've got the storehouse. You pay one of any resource to get three of that resource. So it generates more stuff. That's really good. And it's not even a used one. That's great. Um, this is the barracks. Place a regular army location anywhere in your city without paying the costs. That's a good way to increase your your um, your strength, basically. Uh, we've got the stables. Move one of your unused dice to any location on its row. So that's really good if you build up an awesome row or just like a really good building on one row. And that one you can use, for example, next to here, which means it's more likely to be rolled. So that could be good as well. And then finally, we have the mint. All of the saw locations, so some of these locations at the top left have a different type. Um, so this is referring to buildings with a saw type. So this would be resource generation, generating buildings. All saw buildings uh, locations provide an additional resource when used. That could be good as well. But that one's going to be quite expensive to build. Hello, uh, Ben. How are you doing? Thanks for joining. Um, have you played this game before? Uh, Dice City is a, a game I've played before. Um, but not the solo mode, so this is kind of new for me. Uh, anyway, so the, the next thing I'm going to do is to set it for the next round is just roll these dice 
So let's see what we've got to work with. Well, we've kind of the opposite last time, lots of low numbers. So that's going there. The black dice goes there. The blue dice goes here, which is a victory point. The white dice goes here, and the red dice goes exactly where it was last time. Okay, so... Um, no, I haven't. Okay, well then you're in for a tr well, I say you're in for a treat, it might go horribly wrong, and you might hate this game, but uh, hopefully you'll get to in experience the game, see if it's something you like playing. Um, yeah, so, let's uh, let's go and see what we're going to try and do here. Um, this one is a victory point, but I think this might be better used to try and get some resources that we want. Now, I said we really want this building, and I have the, I have the resources to build it here, if I take these. So that might be fine to keep those there. Um, this one basically gets me one of each thing. Um, and then the other thing I really want to build um, are, are in this row, because I don't really want anything from here per se. Um, but the thing is, uh, what I need to consider is because these cards are going. So I've got like at least another turn to build anything from there. And I actually think maybe this one... Uh, this one's really good because that, that says all locations, not locations on that row, all locations. Uh, so I think that one is the kind of the, the goal here. So do I want to try and manipulate the dice so that I can get more iron maybe? Uh, I could use a, I could use this dice to, because that one um, has, a, requires two iron. You know what, let's just build this one. I think that's fine to do for now. Yeah, so I'm going to use this dice to get some wood, and I can't build anything, uh, so I'm going to carry on. Uh, then I'm going to use this uh, building to gain the iron, and now, because I have enough, I'm going to build the bazaar. So I'm going to spend the iron and the wood. I uh, may as well not even have taken that, right? Uh, so then I'm going to put this bazaar somewhere down, somewhere where I want to more likely to be rolled. And like I said, armies at this point is not necessarily my um, likely to be kind of used until I start generating more of those. So I'm going to put that there. So if I roll a three, there is a, there is a chance that it could be rolled. Sorry, I've misunderstood it earlier on because there is a card somewhere in here that says um, you can you can use an adjacent location. You can use this as an adjacent location. This just says re-roll it. So if it lands on these three spaces, I can re-roll it. So there's a chance, a better chance it could go there. It doesn't have to be there. It can just be anywhere. So actually, you know what? Let's put it um, Let's put it on the small house space. Yeah, how's that? Okay, uh, cool. So uh, that's done. Uh, now if I land on that, it uses it up, but it gives me a thing. So yeah, good. Uh, okay, so now what do I want? I've got one stone. And to build that one, I need another stone and another eye, uh, two iron. There's no way I think of getting iron because these dice are all far away. But I hopefully will be able to make that up next turn. Um, maybe I will try to get. Uh, maybe I'll just take. Well, if I if I don't use the stone this round, um, then oh, I've just thought of something. I'm building it here. Uh, I could have built it underneath there, but instead what I think I'll do is I'll use um, this dice to move this dice one space adjacent. Then I'll use this. So I use this up by putting one of these deactivation tokens on it, but I get one of each resource now, uh, which is great. And now if I wanted to, I could take this, but I think I might use this as a pass token instead. So I'll use this as get a pass token. Now the pass token, I'll just clarify this again. When you use a pass token, you either gain a resource of your choice. So I could do that right now if I wanted to build the... Um, Hi, Nerds of the West! Oh my gosh! So, uh, Nerds of the West are an Australian um, group. They do video games and they do board game stuff and they were doing a really funny game of uh, Terra Mystica, which I um, joined in uh, watching before, where somebody used the sort of channel points to basically swap the um, two players kind of playing positions. Not even positions, like actual um, you know, situations around. So you had somebody who was in the lead and then you had somebody who was in last place and uh, I may have helped them to choose sw swapping the leader and the, the last place person. Um, I never did actually catch the end of that stream. Like, did the person who got put into last place ever catch up? Um, in terms of the game, the game's good. Um, it's it's kind of like a, like a lighter game and it's quite aggressive. So that can be like divisive in terms of you are kind of encouraged to attack and people and kind of harm their ability to progress in the game. So that can be quite divisive. But I personally liked it. You tied last place in the end, uh, which is still one. 
Wait, uh, yes. Yeah, so that was that was quite funny, um, and and I I love the idea of that. And also, you've got a really nice set; like it's very nicely built. So if you you know if you're looking for a new board game channel to to follow um, and check out content, I would I would recommend uh, Nerds of the West. So um, yeah, and thanks for stopping by. Yeah, the game's really good. Um, the game's I guess it's quite light. Um, this is the solo mode. I've never played it before. Um, I was saying that I think with any game where you have to play you know, almost the same game and just get a certain number of points. Not necessarily a fan of that, but I'm giving it a go because I've got it in my collection and uh, we'll see. So yeah, um, I might, I'm not thinking about adding such a um, such a crazy move into my um, own, of, own version. Uh, so yeah, basically if I use these pass tokens, I could build this building right now and therefore not waste one of these stones. That's what I'm thinking. And it basically means everything all buildings provide an additional resource when used. That's like crazy good. So yeah, I'm going to spend the pass tokens. I'm going to gain a iron, and I'm going to spend the iron and the um, and the the stone to build this. And I can just put it anywhere. Like it doesn't have to activate. It just is like a permanent upgrade. So that's really helpful. Uh, so there we go. That's that. So I've built that, and now everything is going to gain plus one resource. So everything suddenly become awesome. Uh, I'm keen to do some Fallout solo streams. It's a bit more story and experience focused. Yeah, I mean, I loved um, the Fallout series. I haven't played what people consider to be the best one, um, 76. I'm kidding. I know people didn't like that. Um, the f the New Vegas. I've not played that one. So if you did that one, I probably would watch. Um, okay, so now we've done that. The end of oh, so now we get rid of these these cards. Um, because of the solo game and these three pop down that fourth one doesn't get filled up and now we see four new buildings so we've got the festival hall gain one victory point for every two resources of the same type that you have in your stock so that seems like an end game bill uh, um wait is that at the time that it activates i guess oh no maybe this is only activated do you not have a feeling that that is only when it's activated so if i manage to get that built so maybe i'll build this somewhere else maybe i'll build this like uh, here because I've got nothing good in this yet. Yeah, I, I probably should have realized that that's only when it's activated I think so yeah, I may have misunderstood that um, <laughs> So yeah, basically that activates the ability when it's built so anyway, it's fine uh, Activating ability Yeah, it says activate uh, use the location and resolve its ability So yeah, basically I, I need to get that to, to use it, but it's fine um, and then we've got, uh, yeah, so when you use that, you'll gain one victory point for every two resources of the same type. Uh, so if I'm building up a lot of stock, that could be good. So that could pair nicely with that. Um, then we've got the stables, uh, two wood, but it's move one of your unused dice to any location in its row. So it's another one of those. We've got the cathedral, which we already looked at, but it's uh, with one victory point for each of the same kind of ability in its row. So that one is another way of scoring points. And then finally, we've got the bazaar, which is another version of that. So there we go. Okay, cool. Uh, so what shall I do? If you have any suggestions about which of these, and if you need me to re-check um, out these, uh, I'm just seeing if maybe I can like adjust it over slightly, move my table over so you can see a little bit better on it. I think I have, may have one of the Fallout games sitting on my, PS4 unplayed. Yes, you are over in uh, the other side of the world, so you must be really late over there. But I really appreciate you stopping by um, and checking out the stream. Um, I will definitely be checking out some more of your board game stuff in the future. So, um, yeah, have a good sleep and uh, see you again soon. <laughs> All right, so um, which of those buildings do I want to build? Not, not necessarily that keen on it, um, but I think maybe the stables could be good if I can get the wood. I really basically need to try and get... Oh. Yeah, so I actually roll the dice first. Let's do this and see what we've got to play with. Okay, so basically all the ones, uh, <laughs> which is actually annoying because I actually don't have any good buildings down there. Uh, but the six goes there and the two goes there. So at the moment, this isn't looking... Um, okay, so not yet again. So it took me a long time to get around to Fallout and I have one. I've barely started just too many games to play. Um, which games are you talking about, um, Bladio and uh, Not Yet Again? Because uh, I... I have played Fallout 4, and I've played Fallout 3 and Fallout 2. I haven't played New Vegas. I haven't played 76. But yeah, they're generally quite good games. And I liked the colour palette of Fallout 4, because it was more bright. I remember a lot of the earlier games being like brownie green, and I wasn't really a fan of that. It's kind of boring to look at after a while. So I don't know how you felt about it. Oh, so you haven't played Fallout 4. Um, 
well you have but not not enough and they had that nice like um, ability to create your own sort of base in that game as well which i thought was quite nice um because you could actually just create your own home um which is a nice addition to the game i don't know if it was in, in previous games i don't think so but yeah the stories the thing is with fallout 4 though I played it until I got to that point where you have to make a decision about which of the factions you want to sort of like go down the route of playing kind of them. And I just couldn't be bothered to make that decision. I basically, when I got to one of the factions, they're like, oh, you need to commit to us. I was like, okay, I'll do other quests and then another one to commit to that. And I think there's a third one which you don't quite have to, but it is impacted by whichever the other one you choose. And so after that happened, I was like, okay, I'm not going to... I'm not going to play on anymore, so yeah. <laughs> um, oh, Ross is here. Hi, Ross. Thanks for joining. Uh, Tom says, I really enjoyed Outer Worlds as well, which is kind of the successor to New Vegas. I've heard really good things about that, but there's two games that sound very similar. The Outer Wild and then the Outer Worlds. So I'm not sure. There's both of those games, I think, are meant to be quite good. Um, you skipped Fallout 4, Ross says. I really enjoyed Fallout 3, but it didn't quite seem different enough for me. Yeah. Uh, I'm an RPG fan, says Not Yet Again, which is why I picked it up. Um, yeah, I love RPGs. I'm playing through Paper Mario right now, actually. Um, but not, not the same, but it is technically an RPG. Uh, and Bladio says, I'm not sure which one I have. I think it was free on PS a while back, so that's now how I have it, yeah. I think I've got, like, um, well, Steam. I have a lot of games on Steam that I got for super cheap or, or free. And, um, if you're not, uh, if you're not a member of the Epic Games Store, which is, like, another Steam kind of system... They do loads of free games on this, and I've got a few of them sitting on play. There's a couple that look really good, I just haven't got around to playing it yet. Um, and so, yeah, I understand the, the situation where you accumulate games you just haven't had time to play. Um, oh, Nerds of the West followed. Thank you so much. Um, I know he's probably gone now, but um, thank you very much for the follow there. Uh, Outer Worlds looks good as there's more humour in it. Okay. I, I think that's the one. Um, is One of them is meant to be quite short, but really good. And I think that's the one. I think it's the Fallout-esque one. The one that's sort of like 50s space thing. Um, so that, that might be the one that I'm thinking of. But I've heard really good things about that. Uh, okay, so... Uh, nothing good, nothing landed over here. So what do I do? What? How do I? How do I build something good? I wouldn't like to build maybe at least one of these other things. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm not really sure. Uh, Outer Worlds does look really interesting. Yeah. So I need to figure out now which of these, um, which of these things I, I can get three wood. So I could build another lumber mill. Maybe that's a good idea. Uh, actually, I only need one because I already have one here. So what? Which of these can I sort of manipulate to get out the way? Um, again, I don't want to use this dice, so I can use it just to bump something up somewhere else. Uh, not there, because that's no good, but iron could be nice. Having another um, mine might be good, because I think there's... I'm really going to... Oh, apologies. Tom says, I got really invested in the characters too. Played through it twice, then was doing some extra stuff to get trophies. And ended up feeling really bad for doing what I did because of how my companions reacted. Oh, yeah, I forget about the companions. Um... Yeah, I like, I, is it, is it, if I remember correctly, you can all, always have, like, one companion following you, is that right? Um, can you choose them, or do they just join you for certain missions and then they're done? Because um, I remember having, like, that robot thing, you could, that could follow you, couldn't it? Uh, but I don't, know if, I don't remember the specifics of the game. Um, how do you guys feel about um, collecting trophies? Like, is it something that you, you do in games, or... Um, is it something you you seek to do as much as possible when you've when you're playing at, or maybe after you finished a game, um, or or are you just not read really that bothered about it at all? Because I feel like when I play video games, um, if I'm really enjoying it, I will make an effort to do um, and get some trophies. I usually say to myself, "This game, I'm going to get all the trophies," but then I realize how hard it is to actually get one or two of them, and I'm like, "There's no way I'm going to get them all without like some serious time investment." So I just will stop. I stop caring as much. But the only, I think, the only like one or two games, definitely one of the only games I've ever got all of the trophies for was for Spider Man on the PlayStation Four, and that was because it wasn't requiring you to be like perfect at everything. There was a leeway. Some of the missions, the side missions, you can do. Um, you don't have to do, like three star. You can and get some two star um, and and one star even you just get accumulate enough total stars to, to be able to get that and I thought that was really good because I hate I know platinum is like the ultimate um, kind of you know goal when you're when you're doing games especially if you play them seriously but for me it was always um, just not enough of a draw like if it takes me too long 
I'm just not that bothered. And then I guess, so I'd guess, yeah, I just got it. Um, I'll sometimes do it depending on the list, Tom says. If it's a story-driven game, I'll play through it without looking at the trophy list so I can enjoy it without any spoilers. Well, I think a lot of the um, uh, the spoilers can be marked as hidden, so they're generally the spoiler spoiler ones. So you can look through the trophy list. I, I usually look through, if I get a trophy, I'll look through it, and then I'll usually just scroll down a bit and see if there's anything that is like, oh, I should be paying attention to that now. But generally, I'm like, I'll play a game um, and enjoy it. Um, uh, for just the game, and if I can get trophies, I will try. But if it's like too much time, it's not going to be bothered. Uh, yeah, so let's 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 get um, let's 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 just get some wood. I'm going to use this, and I'm going to get the wood, and then I'm going to build. Uh, instead of just taking that wood, I'm just going to spend it right now and build a lumber mill. So where do I want to put this? Maybe I can put it somewhere that I'm already at, so I can get in the wood and maybe build um, the stables. I could build those, or I could build the festival hall. Um, I think maybe building the stables is good because it just allows me to build to move anywhere on its row uh, And that's just anywhere. So that's pretty good. So actually, yeah, I'm gonna build the lumber mill and then I'm going to put it under here uh, And then I'm going to basically use this to gain two wood and then I'm immediately going to build the stables And I'm gonna build it somewhere where it's got a re-roll dice ability. So maybe like here I'll build the stables here so that if I land here, or if I land here, there's a chance it could get here, and that allows me to do... So Ross says, my opinion on trophies are it's nice to have extra golds, but if it's tedious to do them, I feel like I'm reducing my actual enjoyment, so I'll skip them. I rarely fully complete trophy lists, even though I love to explore worlds as much as possible. That's more on my own terms. I agree. I think I'm on the same boat. I think it's nice to have... Um, something to do if you are into the game and like have a purpose for replaying and stuff. Just as an example, I'm not going to spoil anything here, but The Last of Us 2 um, is a game that you can't get all the trophies on your first playthrough, but it does offer you an, a, an attempt to go through the game again and um, and gain kind of all of that stuff. So in that sense, it's nice because it's like, yes, I've just played the game. But if I was to go back and play it like in a few months or a few, like a couple of years, then I would be able to get a few trophies that I wouldn't have got. But yeah, any story-based game, I generally want to enjoy the story as much as possible. And another thing about the game, again, no spoilers. Um, some of the things is you can collect like hidden objects or you kind of make an effort to go out and explore the area. And uh, that's just my natural instinct when I'm playing a game that has like maps and h hidden secrets. I'm going to want to explore the map. Um, and it really bugs me. And as soon as I realize I've missed something, my, like, in, what's the word? My intent to actually, yeah, so I won't make a conscious effort to then, like, explore everything. So I'm like, well, I'm going to have to play through it again next time. So I might as well just do all that next turn. So, yeah. Um, I agree. I've learned in the last few years that if I really enjoy a game, I tend to be a completionist. But trophies, achievements never factor into that and instead turn me off a bit. Yes. Exactly, yeah. So just enjoy the game. Like, play the game for what it is. Um, and Tom says, also, in my view, a good trophy list means um, list means you explore everything the game has to offer instead of mindless kill a million goblins uh, with a plastic spoon on a Tuesday, yeah. I, Batman was annoying for that because you'd have to... Um, you you could you'd have to play the game on certain days of the year. I was like, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna a go back to the game on certain holidays just so I can get riddles from that holiday calendar man or whatever, and then b or b change the date just so I can do that because it's cheating. Even though I could, but it's such a hassle. It's like oh oh I I knocked the uh, camera there. I'm gonna have to just fix that one second. Oh I'm taking it the wrong way. Sorry. Oh I've definitely just completely botched that up. <laughs> Sorry for this. I'll. Uh, I won't be a second when I try and fix this. Oh, what happened? There? I don't even know what happened there. I think maybe it was. Ah, uh, there we go. It was perched up on the underneath of my uh, table. So, uh, yeah, I've just kind of messed that up a bit hopefully that's fine I, I i i'm sorry if i've messed up the view there <laughs> um good point they can help you explore the tiny nooks and crannies in a game yeah yeah that's right i i i think that when you're um when you want to enjoy a game um and kind of gives you an incentive maybe check out like uh, horizon zero dawn i know that you you there's bits of the game you don't even need to go to to complete the game and so having like an opportunity to go oh actually if you go and explore that bit you'll find like a nice little side story that kind of you know involves the lore of the game i like that uh, anyway so i did that um did i build no i built that and i've got that two things so i built the stables okay so we're we're good um actually i could do this right now if i built this here I could use this right now, and then I can just move that to... Oh, man, if I didn't use that one, 
I could have moved it to, onto that building, but it's fine. Uh, uh, I could still use... Actually, I, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this. So I'm going to use this to move one of my unused dice to any location on its row. I'm going to use that. I'm going to use this to de uh, reactivate this building. And then I'm going to use this dice to activate this again. So I get one of each resource. So that's quite a nice little combo there. Looks great. What looks great? Did I did I miss something? Looks great. Oh, the oh the camera. Thank you. Yes, I was like, I forgot I said that. Okay, great. So there we go. Um, the end of the round. Um, not attacking anything. Um, uh, we get rid of these. So those gone. And then we move these down. And then we reveal some new cards. And we're going to roll the dice. So this one is another mint. So it's exactly the same as that one. Um, then we've got the Merchant's Guild. So if you use this, you have to deactivate the building and then have to reactivate it to use it. But it says, for each harvest location, um, harvest location, is that a specific kind of building? Um, I'm assuming it's the resource building, but it wouldn't it just say, um, or maybe there's a, like a, a thing called harvest. I'm not sure. Annoying it doesn't say, actually. Yeah, there's nothing in here about the, oh, no, no, harvest location. Um, that's confused me. Why is it say harvest location? Because all of the locations, look, I'll show you. All of the locations have a type. Resource, military, economic, cultural, civic. Well, let's read the thing. For each harvest location on this row, get one resource of the type that each such location produces. Um, harvest locations. I am confused about that. Um, for each harvest location on this row, get one resource of the type that each such location produces. So I'm going to assume that it means like anywhere where I can get stuff. Yes, <laughs> I figured that out in the end. Yeah, sorry. Just I'm being... Oh, if a harvest location on the same row is deactivated, is it this one? Oh, maybe it's a yellow building. Maybe that's what it means. Maybe it's just a yellow one. I have to check this, guys. Bear with me. Um, harvest location. Doesn't say... It doesn't say, I'm a bit stuck here, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, what do you guys think? What do you think a harvest location means? I mean, we can deliberate that while I reveal the other buildings. How about that? Okay, so we've got the training camp. All bandits get minus one shield. So that could be good because then I can actually start defeating them. Um, and then we've got the cemetery, which when you've used it, it's a reactivated ability. But it says use the ability of any location on this row. So this one's good because it means that you can just put it in a place with like good buildings like here, for example. Um, actually, I could build that there. And then that would allow me to then be able to reroll, potentially land on here. And even if it lands there, I can still use that. So that's really good, actually. That's the kind of thing I want to do. Um, oh, thank you for stopping by, Ben. Um, I absolutely will have a great stream. Um, not as great as if you were here for the whole thing, but I forgive you. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, thank you for joining in. And uh, I'll hopefully see you on the next one or maybe later. But have a good day wherever you are anyway. Uh, in Canada, I know. <laughs> okay, so those are all the buildings. I definitely want to build this cemetery. And I can build it right right now uh, while on my first turn. But first, let's roll the dice and see what we've got to deal with. Again, loads of ones. i got to start putting these things on the... Oh, but that one's nice. That one helps me. Uh, the white five and the red five. So the red five goes here, which is good. I want that. In fact, now we can actually start um, start building, maybe trading with the ships. Um, I could actually, at the end of this turn, if I don't build anything, I actually trade with this and get five victory points, which might not be bad. It's one tenth of the way to win in the game. Plus, you see, I'm already getting resources for building these sort of like non, uh, I want to say half. Oh, you know what, guys? I've just looked. Harvest buildings. These are the base. Um, these are like the upgraded base resource buildings, and they say harvest on them. <laughs> so that's what they are. In case uh, mystery solved. Uh, so yeah. So that's what it means. And so that building it says for each harvest location on the row, uh, they get one re get one resource of the type that each building. So if I basically filled up um, a row with harvest buildings and then put that in there then I'd get just like a load of resources at once. So that could pay off. Whether I have time to pay it off is the question, but I could. Um, okay, so I can get my hands on stone and wood and actually move one of your dice to any location on its row. Well, this, let's do this then. Let's do this and put that there, right? And if I use this now, all of the buildings provide additional resources. So I get two stone and two wood if I'd wanted to. Could I use that though? Two stone, two wood. Um, that building that I wanted to build, the cemetery, doesn't use iron. So I could build that right now. 
and then uh, later on I can gain two stone, two wood, and an iron to build... Ooh, like any building... Oh, that one. Maybe that one? I don't know. <laughs> I would get lots of stuff anyway. I won't be able to get the trade ship, but that's fine. I think I'll be fine with this. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend this. I'm going to spend the stone and the wood, and I'm going to get this this building built. The cemetery. So, um, if it lands on here... Let's put it here. If it lands on here now, um, I get to use that as if it was there. Um, and then I could also use potentially land on there. So yeah, this I've basically got a one in three, one in two chance of being able to use this, which generates loads of resources. So I like that row at the moment. I think that's working out very nicely for me. Uh, so yeah, that's done. Now I decide whether I want to um, all location. Oh, that's not that kind of location. Though. That's annoying. Imagine if I landed on these buildings when I used that. I'd be well in uh, there. Uh, okay, so let's... Oh, I can use this to build another lumber mill, actually. So, yeah, actually, how about this? If I use this ability to to just activate that again. I know I don't get to use it this turn. Mm, actually, take that back. If I use this, because I don't need stone, I don't think I'm planning on building more stone things. So if I use that to active and activate that, then I use this to gain two wood. And I'm going to spend that two wood and just build another lumber mill. And let's build it in a... Let's build it in here. Let's try, let's try that strategy. For each harvest location on this row, gain one resource of the type. That could work. And I, I could build that next turn, possibly. So I'm going to use that. Uh, then the final thing I'm going to do... Uh, is activate this, which basically gets me one of each resource. And do I want to use um, the iron on anything now while I can? Because I'm going to lose an iron otherwise. So let's have a look. Um, I could build an army. Not that I'm going to use it, but I've got two iron. Um, or just something with one iron in. Maybe another bazaar. Um, uh, maybe training camp is no good. Um, well, it could be good. I don't think I've got enough to build anything I want, actually. Unless I wanted to build this bazaar again, but I don't think I do. Oh, no. Actually, tell a lie. Let's build a mine. Let's build a mine there. Done. Uh, <laughs> just in case anyone has spotted that, it was quite an obvious thing, because I'm going to go and try and build this. I'm going to try and build this somewhere in here. Okay, so uh, that's the end of the round. So, yep, I, I removed these cards. I didn't get to use any of those. Uh, these slide down, and then now we'll reveal the next... Four buildings. We've got the cathedral, which we've already looked at, which just gains victory points for matching building type, which is actually a cultural, cultural buildings. We've got the well, which is re-roll this dice and any number of your other unused dice. That's pretty good. So that one's all about manipulating the dice rolls. Um, this one is the well, another well, perfect. And this one is a storehouse, which is one we saw earlier on. But basically, you pay one to gain two extra of that resource. It turns one resource into three, which is actually quite nice. Okay, so uh, let's re-roll these dice and see what we're going to play with this turn. Okay. Okay, so we've got a nice variety of numbers here. So we add that there. This is going here. Uh, this is going here. This re Oh, that red's already in the right place. The yellow one's there, which is good. That's good. And then there. So I can use this now to use the abil ability of any location. So actually, if I wanted to, I could just get this and all of the buildings um, require an additional resource. So that's nice. Let's do that. So I'm basically going to use that and, act and deactivate it. But that's because I'm going to um, use this. So everything generates more stuff now. So actually, I could get two iron, um, two three stone and um annoyingly what i was hoping for was to land on wood because then i would just generate so much stuff but uh i can't see any way to, well i could use this to move there and then i would get two wood three stone and two iron and i could then um two iron oh no wait yeah three Two iron which means i could only trade with this person but i want to build this building so i need to have uh, an extra wood and an extra iron. So let's um, let, let's do that. I think generating. I think I'm going to use this to shift uh, this one over to the wood space there. So now I'm going to get my hands on two wood. Uh, no, let's do this one first. Two iron. It's two iron first. Um, now I decide whether I want to build that building. Uh, no, I need some wood first. So I'm going to do this. Oh, I can only build. No, I can build as many um, buildings as I want. So I'm going to use this and gain my two wood. And then, um, 
And it, oh, actually, if I hadn't used one of these buildings, I could have built underneath it. But you know what? It's fine. So yeah, let's um, build this here. I'm going to build this here. So now if I land on here, I'm going to get um, one, two, three, four resources. That's good. At least to me, I think it is anyway. <laughs> and it's also worth three victory points, which again is good. Um, so that cost me two wood, um, a stone and an iron. There we go. This is kind of not becoming as neat now, this little resource collection <laughs> bit over here. But that's fine. Uh, and then this one, I could get my hands on three stone. Do I want to build anything with it? Uh, I could actually build any of these buildings up the top here. Um, Reroll this die and any number of your other unused dice. That could be... That could be good, actually. If I put it in here, just to kind of basically force um, spaces to go on here. So actually, uh, let's let's get that stone. I'm going to get three stone because of because of that. Um, so one, two, three, and then uh, now I'm going to build uh, a well for a stone and an iron. Wonderful, stone and iron, and this one's going to go here. I think. Yeah, this one's going to go here. Okay, uh, so basically, now I need to decide whether I want to build another quarry um, or if I want to maybe save one of the stones for something because, um, or I could build the storehouse and I wouldn't waste any resources, maybe that. Storehouse basically turns one into three things, that's good because I will generally have a lot of stuff. So um, yeah, let's build that. It costs me a wood and a stone, but let's build it... Somewhere I haven't really used a lot of the buildings. Let's cover up the army. I'm, I just don't think I'm going to use the army there. So yeah, let's do that. Uh, actually, up here, maybe, because there's nothing good going on up here. I'm more likely to get stones, so let's cover up one of the stone spaces. Okay, cool. So that's the end of the round, so let's get rid of these. We move these down and we reveal four new buildings. We've got the catapult, which if you use the building or you activate it, adds three strength to your army, which means we can take out some bandits for some victory points. We've got the church. Use the ability of any location in your city with a die in it. Wow, that's really good. That's basically an even better version of uh, that one. Uh, and it's, yeah, wow, that is really good. Uh, then we've got the um, training camp, which we've already seen, and it reduces strength of buildings, but we don't need to worry about that. No, reduces the defense, sorry. And then we've got the marketplace, which says pay one or two of any one resource. For each one paid, get two of any other resource. So that allows you to turn stuff into other stuff. Wow, this is a very much a game of um, engine building, sort of, isn't it? Uh, and, and obviously manipulating dice. So let's roll again and see what we've got. So we've got this one, which is great. Move one of your unused dice to any location on its row. That's fantastic. We've got this one, which we can re-roll. We've got this one here, which is a re-roll. Uh, we've got this one, which is just an iron. And we've got this one, which is... Ah, perfect. So looking at this board now, I'm very much feeling this is a strong, strong board we've got. Uh, I'm just going to try and adjust this down slightly because I feel like it could be bit more clear for you yeah because i don't think you could see resources that i have there we go um all right so uh let us uh what do we want well, i really want this this one's again about manipulating the dice that could be really good because it just basically says any you can use ability twice yes actually use the ability of any location in your city with a die on it so that means you can use it twice you can do something twice which is good um then we've got this one which churns um, churns out resources, turns things into other things, which could be good for trading ships. So I do want to build that one as well. Um, that one requires lots of wood. Um, yeah, so if I want to get both of these in the next two turns, I need to get lots of wood. So is there a way for me to do that right now? Uh, I don't have any wood. Oh, let's re-roll these dice anyway, because, yeah, let's try this. Two. Uh, oh, that's annoying. That's the one of the only ones I didn't want it to land on there. Um, and then let's re-roll this dice as well. Oops shouldn't have done that one okay so we've got iron and more iron i guess um hi uh steph thank you for joining how are you doing today uh creamy master aka steph um is one of my uh, regular uh, viewers so thank you very much for stopping by i hope you're good uh have you played this game before this is um i'll show you the box the box art is actually nice i like it dice city it's a very visually striking box um i'm not gonna lie it was part of the reason i um <laughs> i decided to get the game uh so yeah, uh, okay, so uh, we are now looking to figure out how we can best use this. Well, actually, technically, if I use one of these dice, um, move one of your unused dice to any location on its row, which is the most beneficial for me to do. Uh, maybe one that's got two, um, maybe maybe one of them that's got uh, like two, uh, wood on, maybe? 
would maybe this one over here, but that's no good. Um, darn it. Okay, so I can move this to here, which will re-roll this dice in any number. Oh, that one could be good. That one could be real good. So move your one. So I can re-roll this dice. Yes, I'll do that. So I'm going to re-roll them all. Hello, um, Games for Life Gamer. I have... Uh, oh, so Steph says, I'm fine. Thank you. I haven't played that, but I ordered Flip City yesterday because you liked the playthrough. Oh, that's awesome. You know what? That's like the second time someone said that they've um, played through a game or bought a game based on seeing me play it, which is just... I'm not getting paid for it, uh, but I like it. I just like the idea that I've, I've introduced a game to somebody that they like. So yeah, let me know how you get on with Flip City. It's quite nice. And then we've got uh, Games for Life Gamer. Hello. How are you doing? I don't believe um, you've joined the stream before, but... Um, how are, you, how are you? Are you well? Are you a board game fan? Because when it says games, that could mean video games or board games. I do mostly board games, but I also do the odd video game as well. Um, so yeah, I'd love to know more about you. How are you? Uh, Ross says, you're introducing people to new games. Um, it's an awesome way to check out things you don't own and maybe you wouldn't pick up. Yes, and in fact, uh, what I've liked about your streams, Ross. Oh, by the way, Ross is a, a fellow streamer. Um, so more, more games, please. Definitely follow him. His streams are awesome. Um, he has some of the most, uh, you must pick the games based on how beautiful they look as well as how they play because I don't think I've seen a stream of yours where I didn't enjoy the look of the game as well. And Ross is, takes more care as to his like his dressing of his uh, <laughs> of his game streams. Mine is just like I've just got three uh, rotating sort of cloths which I put as a background and my quality isn't as good um, unfortunately. But yeah definitely worth following Ross if you know if you aren't following him because his streams are awesome and he does do really good board game streams as well. Some video game streams as well. Um, it's not conscious, but clearly it changes my choices, yeah. Like, I, I Honestly, I can't remember any stream. Well, I've looked back on your channel a couple of times and been like, oh, all of those those broadcasts look amazing. Um, so yeah, follow Ross if you're not already. His streams are awesome. Okay, so uh, I forget what I was going to do. Oh, uh, re-roll this dice and any number of unused dice. Well, let's re-roll these. That's a, great, that's a great card. Okay, so I've got a three red... <laughs> okay, apparently this just that one's landed on the same space and this one this one's okay That one's okay, but I need to re-roll this one again now Six ah, oh, that's not great uh, It's not about the dressing but what you do with it. Uh, Ross has inspired a few of my most recent purchases as well um, if you um, if only we were getting um, like a f uh, like what, what's it if only we were getting things where we were paid you know but no I, I don't want to do that in fact um I actually need to turn off ads to this stream because I feel like it's uh, I, I I was looking at how to do it but I can't find a way to turn off ads completely unless I'm completely missing it um actually I think there is one way I haven't tried yet but I just feel bad because like Ross said me and Ross had a conversation it's like there's no point doing um ads when you're a really small time creator like me because it's just an annoyance and I actually rather people just watch the stream rather than being potentially turned off by adverts so yeah I really need to you to let me know how to do that I think you can switch them off um oh you like my streams because of how well I share my thought process that's uh, thank you for that that's nice I, I I guess I do talk through my turns a lot so you can see sometimes I'm quite scatty, like I've decided to do one thing and then I completely change my mind. It's because I have to like constantly talk as well. <laughs> um, oh, and Steph says it as well. Thank you very much. I liked actually when uh, watching some streams, I think Game Night does it as well. Not necessarily like talking through their thought processes, but the way that they kind of help each other kind of um, make their turns more efficient or better. And they're always very much helpful to each other. They're not like super competitive. Um, well, I can't be when it's just solo. Well, I can actually, uh, whatever. Um, and then Ross says, I think you can switch them off. I don't have mine on, but I can't remember how. I think I've, I think I turn off pre-roll off on the, um, on the, the, the creator dashboard. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> I've just noticed as well on my stream uh, dashboard, it says, excellent. No recommended changes. Clearly, I'm doing everything right. <laughs> it's not like it's watching my stream and going, no, I think you need to be like a bit more calm or collected or louder. I don't know, but it's just a silly joke. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, okay, so um, everything provides additional resources now, which is good. Annoyingly, none of these are on um, on wood. So if I'd actually moved this, uh, it's not the best. It's not the best, but I can get lots of um, iron and... If I had a way to get rid of that and get some wood instead, that would be better. Because I've just got so many resources. Maybe I can just use this turn to sort of like populate this uh, this over here. 
I would like to get some wood though. Um, and in fact, I could guarantee myself getting some uh, by by using this dice, which I think I will do to move. Uh, oh wait, actually, do I, I need to? I need to get this dice to here because it's the only one I'm next to that's got wood spot on it. And I need to make sure that I have two wood so I can build the forest, uh, the lumber mill here on top of the forest. That's what I'm thinking. There's a reason you two are the channels I subscribe to. Are oh, you? You guys are like so kind. Genuinely, thank you. This is really, it's really nice because I think Ross would also say the same thing. Like, I'm not doing it to, for any reason at the moment, other than just enjoying doing it and sharing games and just kind of being able to play games for fun with a potential audience. I, I think there's no, like, great ambition for this. Like, seriously, you know, there's no real likelihood of, of it happening unless, like, you know, we got super lucky, but it's just the fact that we do this for fun. And just the idea that some people out there are just like, yes, I like to watch that. I think that is just so, so nice, you know? Um, but thank you, Tom, for, for subscribing. Like, that's genuinely good. And as, you know, I haven't said it um, this stream yet, but I am, ex I've extended all of the revenue that I get from anything um, from streaming to Black Lives Charity. I'm donating it all. Um, to the end of the month so i was originally just june but i've decided to extend it to july as well so that anything that you have donated is actually going to a good cause um so thank you thank you for for that um awesome okay yes it is a great cause to go to i'm glad to have sensible people um uh, watching my stream and, and and agreeing with that statement because that's good i agree with that okay uh anyway so i think i might do this uh, because i can't get the wood any other way and i need it to be able to build something useful actually before we do that let's have a look at these buildings um that one is quite nice and i could build that one this turn actually the marketplace um and i could build it on maybe uh this row or this row because i haven't really done much there and it's worth two victory points so actually i think i want to do that it needs two wood for that which will be fine because if i activate this everything's doubled anyway and i'd need iron which i have as well and then i have an iron and a stone left over and can i build anything else with that Probably not, but I actually wouldn't need to because I can just store it. Um, so yeah, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, annoyingly, I wish I could use that because that just churns loads of stuff. But I'm going to use um, this dice uh, to move this one over. I'm going to use this dice to add um, external resource. I'm going to build, I'm going to use this which gets me two wood instead of one. And I'm going to use this, which gets me two iron instead of one. And now I'm going to build the um, the marketplace. So that costs me one iron and two pieces of wood. So now I get to build this anywhere that I like. Um, so let's have a look uh, where I'm going to build this. I'm going to build it in one of these rows. Um, who have I not been getting very much stuff on, at all from? Maybe over here. Maybe over here, I guess. Yeah, I think I'm going to put it there. I don't know why. Uh, I, 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 I just a random bit. Okay, so yeah, done that. Um, I don't have to get rid of any resources and I'm not going to defeat any bandits. So yeah, uh, end of the turn, these guys go and now we move these down to here and then we reveal four new buildings. We're about like halfway through the deck, I think. So let's have a look. We've got the stables, which we already have uh, one of them on the board. We've got the cemetery, which again, we already have one, which is a really good one, to be fair. Uh, we have the marketplace, which I just built. So that's another one of those. And then finally, we have the merchant guild, um, which is another one of these. So that one's not going to be as good. Um, that one could be good if I built it there potentially, but uh, I'm going to try and get it over there. So those are the four we do this time. Now we roll the dice and we'll see what we're getting. Okay, so this one, this one rolls too many. I'm going to switch it up. I've got a cursed dice here, I swear. So I'm going to switch it up. <laughs> Take it. So I'm going to get rid of that one. Right. Now, I am still going to keep it as a six. I'm not a cheat. <laughs> but that one's rolled six too many times for this for this game. Uh, so yeah, and that one goes there. That one goes there. And that one goes here. And that one goes here. Um, it says move and any number of your unused dice. That's fantastic because that one is really good. Ah uh, yes, gotta watch out for those cursed dice. I think um, I think that that uh, cursed dice it could be an alternative name for um, Escape from the Dark Castle, because <laughs> that's genuinely the game. None of the dice go the way you want in that game. Um, I'm actually going to use this. I'm going to re-roll this. Uh, I'm going to re-roll this one, 
I'm going to keep that one, but I am going to re-roll this one because I think that's it, yeah. Make sure you keep it locked up in a lead box in case this <laughs> case escapes again. Yeah, it's so true. I mean, it's it's bad. Um, and actually, this is a nice backup. The only annoying thing is that this one doesn't actually do anything for me here. It just means that I could, um, I could get something better on a different row. So actually, I think... This is a bad location. This is bad for this. So I am going to re-roll this one as well. Because anything else, you know, other than these two is actually really good. And I really wanted to land on Merchant Guild. Anyway, so I'm going to re-roll all of these. Um, but the best thing is this one is going to turn those two into other resources. So I've got lots of flexibility. Look, see, no... Oh. But it is landed on a three, which I swear it's landed on as well, just as much. So yeah. Okay, so two wood there. Uh, four here, which is two stone and white. Oh, yes. Okay, so look at this. Um, this is great from having resources. Yes, def bad, bad die. Yes, definitely. Um, by the way, how do you guys... This Actually, this is a um, thing I'm going to post on Twitter, I think. How do you guys feel about using dice, the word dice, to describe a single die? Or are you, like, finickety about that? I've only recently, by the way... Um, started spelling the word woe correctly, like woe, because it's apparently W-H-O-A, not W-O-A-H, and that was something on Twitter, I saw on Twitter, but I've realized that when I'm watching stuff with subtitles, like in the, when I'm watching stuff at night, and, you know, I turn the volume down, I'll put the subtitles on, and actually it is spelt the correct way there, W-H-O-A, but I, I just learned that recently, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm fine with people using, um, you know, uh, 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 dice to, to spell that, because we know what they mean. But yeah, technically, multiple dice and one die. But yeah. Uh, okay, so actually, I'll re-roll this, may as well. If it's a six, I'm going to change it again. I really will. Six dice. <laughs> okay, that's two bad dice now. <sighs> that is annoying. That is very annoying. <laughs> you said dice before for a single die, and I was irritated. But Tom is not fussed either way as long as it's consistent. Okay, I think it's because I am conscious of the fact that it is the correct pronunciation, but uh, I, sometimes I just don't really consider... I, I think it's fine. I think as long as you understand what someone means, um, I'm fine with it, but I totally understand it. Is The official language is die and dice, so we'll try and use that maybe. Okay, so now I can get stuff... Um, and I can turn it into other stuff. Uh, that one says pay one of any resource to get three of that resource. So can we, can we now potentially trade with this trade ship here? Because I don't really want any of that stuff. Like, it's fine. It's fine. But I think we can go without. So actually, I'm going to try and get uh, nine resources here. I've got two. And I can turn one into three. So that'll be four resources. I go five, six. And then I can get seven, eight. And then I can, yeah. So I think I can do this. All right. I'm always messing up my language, much like my rules. <laughs> Nothing wrong with, um, nothing wrong with not understanding the rules. Like, I imagine you're similar. But as a as my job is about board game cafe, and it's about you know part of it involves teaching games, and we've got like a thousand games in the library, and I know hundreds of those. I've played this like twice before, and I still know most most of the rules from my from the top of my head. I think it's fine to check rules. I'd rather play a game right and have to check rather than having to, um, you know, have to pretend that you know something and just kind of barrel your way through it. But again, if it's just me and I'm playing solo on my own, yeah, it's fine if I make a mistake, whatever. But I feel like I owe it to you guys to play with the right rules and correct myself. Um, Tom says, I generally lean towards descriptivism rather than prescriptivism. Those are cool words. I feel like I might know what they mean, but I'm not 100%. Um, I, I, yeah, I'm going to need to, like, I'm going to need... I'm going to ask you if you could please um, explain that because I really don't <laughs> I'm a bit confused about the, the specifics about that. But I like that the sentence is very articulate. I'm just not entirely sure what it means. So yeah, I'm gonna, this turn I'm going to try and get um, this. I could actually potentially get this. I could potentially get this. Okay, so let's get the two wood first of all. That's an, a given. So we'll get that. And then I'm going to now um, gain two stone as well. Meaning now I need two iron to get the three. It's a little like respect for the designer to play by the right rules. Yes, of course. I think checking for rules is fine. Even if you're halfway through a game. The annoying thing, the only annoying thing I think about rules and getting them wrong is when you've played by the wrong rules and you're too far into the game to to like make like a good uh, like course correction. Um, but if you, and you don't want to start the whole game again because it's like you've just wasted the last 
45 minutes to an hour. So it's like you just play on. But in the back of your head, that's the thing. It's like, whatever happens, this isn't the real game. And if you win, it's like, it's not really legit. And if someone else wins, it's like, that wasn't really legit. That's just a little thing in the back of my head. I don't know if anyone else feels the same way. But yeah, always play by the right rules if possible. Um, okay, so uh, now I've got to choose whether I get another stone... Um, and then I can spend that. So I'll gain 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But I can get 8, 9, 10, 11. I'm one away. I'm one away from being able to do the full trade ship. But maybe I can manipulate it so that I can have those two extra resources to build a building that I want. Whether that's a lumber mill. Lumber mill might be good because I can then fill that up. And I can have like 10 victory points. So that's what I'm going to try and do this turn. Can I make it work? Um, I think it's fine to get another stone because... I am going to trade these in now. So I'm going to get this. So I'm going to pay one of any resource to get three of that resource. So I'll spend this one to gain two more. So now I have loads. Look at this. This is like not even, you know, at the end game. This is happening here. Um, Steph says the same here, but it depends on the wrong rule and the art of the game. A party game, I don't really care. Yeah. Um, of course, rules are there to help guide your enjoyment that have been written a certain way to curate that. But of course, it's easy to make little or big mistakes just try to iron them out with each play, yes. I think, um, oh, you just reminded me of something there when you said that. Um, I, I, I'm i part of um, some Facebook groups for a lot of Stonemaier games, because when I was looking for Easter eggs for that article that I wrote, um, I had to join them to try and get some information. And uh, the number of people who play Wingspan with the house rule of they play an extra round, it's just, like, it's just, I keep thinking, like, the reason that the designer has decided on um, that number of turns is because maybe the game starts to get broken and some of the cards are too powerful if they play another round. But some people do it, lo loads of people do it. And I think that's fine because obviously, but I feel like weird if I, I don't think I could play that because I just feel like they, especially a company like Stonemaier Games who have a, like a really good um, base of playtesters who they can like really test these games. I trust their judgment when it comes to um, like how strong and how weak the cards are. And I feel like if you play on more than the game says, um, not only is there like no round bonus, for example, but also then the 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 bonus cards they become too powerful. Cards that kind of activate um, whatever they can, you know, give you bonuses every turn or potentially another player's turn. They can become too powerful. So in my head, in my head, I'm like. That, I couldn't play that. I couldn't play on with that rule. It's fair enough if you agree, all agree to it. But if one person doesn't agree to it, I think, no, I don't think I could play it like that. Uh, uh, Tom says, basically, language changes over time based on common usage. Instead of being strictly defined, and anything that deviates from that is wrong, regardless of how widespread it is used and understood. Um, I haven't played Nova Luna yet, yet, Steph, but I really want to. I actually looked for it online, but it's hard to find because obviously it's... Uh, uh, for the uh, Spiel des Jahres, so I'm probably not going to find it anytime soon, but I'd like to play it sometime. Um, but yes, uh, yes, I understand what you mean when you say that, because you were referring to language, of course. Yeah, I think it's fine. Language evolves. I think actually emojis, are, there's a really fascinating conversation to be had about emojis and whether they are actually a language. And I'm on the side of, yeah, they are very descriptive. And yeah, it's gonna, it's it's never gonna be like written language emojis in terms of like you know actually writing on a letter, but in terms of like text, it conveys a lot through very little, and I think that's quite a nice evolution of language. Don't know about how anyone else feels about that, but hopefully I'm not being controversial. <laughs> anyway, I've used that, um, and now the last one I can do is pay one or two of any one resource for each one paid, get two of any other resource. So I'm gonna spend a stone to get um, wood, I think. Ah, uh, this isn't gonna work out as I wanted, but if I, oh, actually, no, I can. Oh no, because now I have to spend something else. I'm not gonna be able to build the lumber mill, I don't think, because I've just realized, if, unless I did that differently, what did I spend? I spent a wood to get three extra wood, didn't I? So maybe if I just didn't do that and I did, oh man, I know, I, you know what, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just probably just gonna keep it how it is. Keep one um, wood left over for something Oh, wait, hang on. Pay one or two of any one resource for each one paid. Oh, no, wait. Oh, if I'd had to spend two stone and then I would have got loads of wood. But yeah, you know what? For the sake of getting like 10 points, I think it's way worth it. So I'm just going to keep it as it is. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of all of these, all three of these. I'm going to trade up to um, this thing over here. And I'm going to trade with the trade ship for 10 points. 
Oh, it does a little bit wonky, this uh, board, actually. Sorry. Unless I'm, watch I'm watching my stream in the background. It's probably silly to do that, isn't it? Okay, sorry. Uh, okay, so, wait, someone's just said. Uh, Ross has just has Ross just has me hassling him in his streams every time he makes a mistake, if I know the game well enough. <laughs> uh, Tom's a total lifesaver, especially because the rules seem to change from round to round when I'm streaming. <laughs> <laughs> Where's that emoji from, by the way? Is it one of the ones that comes with the thing? Because that's actually quite funny. Um, yeah, you know what, Tom, though? If you notice me playing rules wrong, I'm totally fine with you uh, correcting me. Anyway, I just gained 10 victory points. That means I'm 20% uh, of the way towards winning the game. So I'll just put those over there so you can see them. All right. Uh, okay, so that's the end of the round. So we get rid of these cards, and then we move these down, and then we reveal new cards. We've got the church again, which um, we have... We didn't build the church last time, did we? Oh, re use the ability of any location in your city with a die in it. Oh, yeah, so that means I could use things twice, which would be nice, actually, if I'd had that, for example. But, yeah, okay. Uh, we've got another mint, which uh, hasn't come in use. Oh, it has, actually. It's come in use a couple of times. We've got the cemetery again, which is use the ability of any location on this row. And then we've got, uh, oh, mana. So this one is just when you activate it, it just gets you two victory points. I actually might try and build that because that's quite nice. Um, did I want to build any of these? I've got all of those already. I don't know if it's worth it. Um, anyway, going to roll the dice and see what we get. At some point, it's going to be really annoying to um, to, to um, build buildings because I'm not going to get as much use out of them. This is good. Uh, that's okay. This is fine. Uh, five. Hooray! This is not cursed. Well, yeah, this one isn't cursed at the moment. And then we've got the blue three, which is good. That's the one we want. All right, so uh, let's re-roll this dice because it might land on there and that would be nice. Okay, so let's re-roll it. One. Oh, perfect. So let's re-roll this one. Um, I like that one. I like that one. I think that I will... Um, I could use that one to bump that up there, or I could just re-roll it. I think I'm going to re-roll it. So I'm going to re-roll this one, this one, and this one. Yeah, I think I'm happy with the rest of them. I think we've got a chance of getting some mega, mega points in this. Uh, so Tom says, in fairness, I'm only having to concentrate on the game. <laughs> yeah, true. And then Steph says, for some reason, Flip City is called Design Town in the German version. Um, yes, that's what I was saying. Design... Actually, I think I remember I was going to mention that, but then I started talking about the wilderness kind of expansion, which isn't really expansion. It's more of like a reiteration of the base game. But Design Town is the same game. But yeah, it's just a different name. But I like that name as well, Design Town. I think it's a nice name. It doesn't really, it doesn't really make you think of the the. Oh, hang on, I've got this re-roll again. Sorry. Uh, I got distracted by that, but I actually I might re-roll this one and this one. This one I, I want it to go on here because this is going to get me more resources. But having wood is actually not a bad shout there, so I could keep that there. But I could get one, two, three, four different resources if I if I went there or here. Sorry, I think I'm going to re-roll this one as well. This is quite nice actually. Yeah, I, I the design town has a slightly different bit of um, graphical uh, graphical thing. Oh look, all the ones. That's actually fine, because I can re-roll it again. Oh, my gosh. So I'm basically... Go right, you know what? I'm re-rolling all of these again. <laughs> this is a lot more dice rolling than you're supposed to do in this game. Okay, so I've got four. Okay, I've got two. I've got one. That's actually terrible. I don't like that. Uh, <laughs> but, I'll, hey, I'll, I'll run with it. It's fine. Okay, so uh, now I'm going to... Uh, oh, that's fine, because actually you can spend that to get other stuff instead. Um, I've got that. I could actually use this um, to move something somewhere if I wanted to. So actually, I could use that one because I'm not going to... Oh, you know what? I could roll this and then move that on then re-roll it again. But actually, it's probably better for me to move this with this. Or... Oh, man. Okay, so I've, I've got a decision to make now whether I move one of these dice. That one's good. Because that one just gets me stuff, through one of everything. That one then I can manipulate and spend it to turn it into other stuff. So, I'm, so if I'm like plentiful in a, a resource like stone, for example, I can use it to turn it into other things. Um, uh, or I could use this dice to go on here, which everything generates resources, but only the green buildings. So actually that's not good. Um, but am I going to use this? Am I going to use this? Would I rather keep that or would I rather keep this? I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this dice to move this um, here because I'll get more resources there. Yeah, okay. So now I'm going to use this, deactivate it, and I'm going to get one of each resource. So I get two wood and uh, a stone 
and a iron. And then I'm going to use this again, use it up just a bit. Oh, 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 almost lost that. Uh, to then get one of everything again. So I get stone and iron and, and, and wood. Oh, struggling there. Uh, there we go. And then I've got this one which allows me to spend stuff to turn it into other stuff. And I've got more wood. So um, what can I build? I could actually build loads of um, lumber mills if I wanted. Or iron things, actually. Maybe that's the best thing to do. Annoyingly, I'm not going to be able to get um, the trade the ship. But I can trade with the, the cheaper ship. That's five points still. That's something. Or I could just spend it all on, on buildings. Um, maybe up here. Maybe I start doing stuff up here. Because I think maybe just filling these up with um, buildings. And maybe um, doing another merchant guild, maybe. Because that's a lot of wood. Um, that's probably not a bad idea. But to build that, I need two wood... I need two wood and one of these and one of these. So that's to build that one. And then if I spend these resources, maybe two of these, uh, one of these to get something else. Uh, oh no, actually, because I want to keep stuff for the trade ship. Uh, well, actually, I'd have another piece of wood if I used that building up there. So that would be another one. And then I could spend... Oh, it's not going to work. It's not going to be able to get enough to a trade ship and build something good this turn. So I think I am going to use... Or oh, I, could, I could pass... I could pass. What have I got right now? I've got enough to, to trade for two of each. So I have that. And I can and I can build a lumber mill as well. If I passed with that, um, I could... Yeah, actually, if I then... I could just build whatever... I could I could turn that into iron and then just spend to build some, um, some mines. So actually, yeah, let's do this. Let's do this. I'm going to spend this two wood here to build... To, to turn it into, like, four irons... And then I'm going to um, I'm going to bend. Then I'm going to uh, use this dice to pass. I think because there's no point keeping it uh, to get a pass token, which might help me something else. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend these and I'm going to trade. So I'm going to spend all two of each resource. I'm going to trade with this ship here, which gives me five victory points. It's still better than nothing. And then I'm going to um, build some iron mines. So I'm going to bend some two mines somewhere on the board so i'll build that one there and i'll build that one there and then hopefully um i will now uh get another one of these i probably won't but at least i'll get some more stuff so yeah these are all going to go now unless yeah i can't build anything so i'm going to get rid of all of these uh then these are going to uh, slide down and then build more buildings so what have we got this time we've got another mana which gives us two victory points uh, we've got a um, a merchant guild. Well, we need to try and build that this time because we can pop it in here. And then we've also got the grand statue, which is pay up to three stone or iron. When you build grand statue, get one victory point for each resource paid. And then we've got the town hall, which is to use the ability of any location in your city. Now, is, we had that on before. I don't think so. I mean, it costs a lot, but that one is just like you can just use anything. So that's actually really good. And we should try and build both of these, which requires... Four wood, three stone, and two iron. Okay, let's roll the dice, see what we've got. The annoying thing is now that we've used up a lot of those. So maybe instead of a pass token, maybe instead of a pass token, I can just actually deactivate that instead. I hope that's okay. If anyone questions that, I will wreck on that back. But hopefully that's fine. Okay, so this is uh, three. So maybe they're all just cursed, the red dice. <laughs> that seems to be the way. Uh, the yellow one goes here, which is good. Um, I'm seem to rolling a lot of the same things, and actually, look at that. Thankfully, I um, I deactivated that. Well, if with your approval, audience, um, and that means that I can actually do the thing where I gain um, all of those resources again. So that's actually really good. But um, let's re-roll this one just to see where it lands, because it could land somewhere good. Three again. Let's re-roll it again. Four. Okay. So well, that's fine, because I can re-roll it using this one. I'll re-roll all of these. How about that? Now, if this red rolls a three or a six again, I'm going to change it. I'm going to change the dice because it's not fair. Okay, finally, finally, <laughs> we've got the yellow five as well, and we've got the blue six. So I don't think that's been rolled before. Okay, so now we've got uh, well, really high roll dice here. Um, this one is less good. Um, I would be good to try and you know reactivate some of these buildings. But this one, for example, just gains us a lot of stuff. So I think I'll just use that straight away. And we'll gain two wood, uh, a stone, and an iron for that. So that's pretty good. So that's, there we go. Um, this one gets us an iron. Um, that building just lets us turn one into three things. So actually, um, 
that one's not doing me anything right now, but I could use one of those to activate. In fact, what am I looking at? I need four wood, three stone, and two iron. So I got I can get four wood if I um do this. And then if I I could use this to gain an extra iron and that as well. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use this ability to reactivate that. I'm going to then gain this iron here. There we go. I'm going to now use this ability, so I have to deactivate it again, but it gets me one of each resource. And then um, I'm going to uh, spend this to turn one wood into three wood. So I gain two extra wood. Now, I believe I have enough to build those two buildings. So I'm gonna build the, um, the Merchant's Guild, which costs two wood, a stone, and an iron. And I'm gonna build it I'm gonna build it here, I think, because I've got enough... Oh no, actually, I want to build it on something so I gain resources. Yeah, so that's fine. So that's built. And then the other thing I'm gonna build, uh, I think I, I accounted for this, is the town hall, which is two... Oh no! I haven't got enough stone for this. I mean, it's fine because I can build it next round anyway, but obviously I just messed up. I thought I needed more iron than I did stone. Doesn't matter. I still got time to make up. Um, so I've got three wood, two iron, and one stone, and I really need to spend it on something. Uh, wood and iron I've got lots of, and that's annoying because I don't need a lot there. I could use the, I could build the church, which is one of everything, and then I would only lose one wood. Um, and that one isn't terrible, it's just not really, it's not really inspiring any excitement in me, that one. <laughs> um, or maybe I could just build a, a, a lumber, uh, sorry, a, a lumber mill with the two wood. And maybe another iron uh, somewhere so I can just get the most of these. Yeah, I think maybe that's good. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend this two iron to build a mine. Uh, let's build the mine uh, here, I guess. Yeah, I think that's fine. And then I'm going to build a, a lumber mill for two wood. And I'm going to place it down here at the bottom. So this is like a banging row at the bottom. So when do you lose the game? So in this solo mode, you lose if you don't get 50 victory points by the end. Um, which means um, I, I, we, the game ends when I run out of cards from this supply. So you see I've got a deck here of, well, let's, let's count how many I've got. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I've basically got five turns in here. I'm going to do this now. So actually there's four turns in the deck, but I still get to keep cycling through the cards until they're out. So basically meaning I've got... Um, uh, did I do that right? Yes, no, no, I did. Okay, so basically I've got one, two, three, four, five, six turns left, and at the moment I've got 15 of 50 victory points I need. I'm playing on normal difficulty, so in the normal difficulty you've got four cards in each row, but in the hard difficulty you've got five cards in each row, so I feel like there is a good chance I can get 50 victory points, um, based on the fact that I've got like three extra turns. Uh, than I would if if I would otherwise. But obviously, I'm I'm learning this. I think I've got a pretty good engine going on here. Uh, but hopefully, that answered your question. If I, I lose, if I get to the end of the game and I haven't achieved 50 victory points, but actually, I've got like three, five, six, seven, ten, eleven, fourteen victory points on the board. So I'm actually, on a, I'm actually on 29. So I've 21 in just over a third of the game. I think I can do that. I think so. Anyway, uh, oh, so the new buildings, by the way, um, we had the festival hall which is gain one victory point for every two resources of the same type that you have in your stock. Um, we had the blacksmith, which is all of the army locations provide an extra sword when activated, obviously. You've got the great wall, which is just gives everything defense on the same row, um, which is less good in a solo game. And we've got the festival hall, which is another one of them. So yeah. Okay, so we roll this three, which is good because that generates more resources. We've got the four, meaning this dice definitely isn't cursed. Uh, we've got the blue four, which is a reroll. We've got the white five, which is... Oh, okay. So this is actually going very well, I feel. I feel like. Um, let's reroll the blue one, though, uh, just to see. Okay, so on five. So I actually get stone. So actually I'm going to get two, four, four stone, six stone if I use that. Um, six stone, man, that's a lot, isn't it? If I had that ability, that would give me three victory points. But um, I don't want too much stone. I don't like to, to build... It's too much stone stuff, although I was missing that last time, I think, uh, which is annoying. And actually, I want to build this. So I, c I need to get another wood, another stone, and another um, another iron, which I could get here. 
to be fair, I could get that right here. Oh, I've got this one. Pay one resource to get any, to gain three of that resource. So if I actually uh, maybe use this to manipulate one of the other dice and land on, <gasps> actually, look, let's do this. Use that dice, gonna go here, and I'm gonna use this dice and activate that building. Wait, I no, I used that last time, didn't I? I didn't, I didn't put it on. I'm pretty sure I used that last round. But do you remember? Does anyone remember if I used that? I feel like I did use it, but I just didn't activate it. So that's not true. So actually, if I go back to here, because I think that's what it was. Yeah, I need to deactivate that building if I want to use it again. Although I haven't said that. Oh, that one's too far away. No, this one. So I, oh, but then I'd move it off that building, which is annoying. Um, okay. What to do? Hmm. I think... I think this one isn't so good for me right now because I'm only going to get two extra resources. But if I if I was to, to move it, I could potentially land on there and, and, and somewhere else maybe. So I'm thinking as much as I don't want to, oh, it could be a waste though because it land right back on there if it's a three and there's a one in six chance of it happening. So maybe I won't do that. Maybe I'll leave that where it is. And actually I could just move that off there onto there. Um, or I could try and... I could try and move this. Uh, I, I, I getting too much stone is crazy, so I'm going to take this off. Oh man, this is kind of difficult, you know. I need what do I need? Two, you know what? Actually, all I need is that to get that. So if I take this dice and I basically move this here, this is going to be really annoying because I'm going to have to spend two dice to get this. But I'd rather ensure the town hall is built because it's worth three victory points. So yeah, I'm going to use then. I'm going to use. Um, I'm going to use this, which is kind of crazy, and then I'm going to take that off, and then I'm going to use this, and I'm going to take every one of every resource. And that's good because I now have enough to build the town hall, which I will do right away before I forget. And actually, I could use it right away because I can build underneath somewhere where I am. So if I build a town hall, I don't want to build it there, actually. I don't want to build it there. Maybe, maybe, um, maybe one of these rows that I haven't got a lot going on. Maybe, maybe here. That's that's a bit crazy then. It's all about manipulating it, isn't it? This is actually good. I think I think I could, I think I'm gonna build it there. Okay. Uh, so uh, Crimmy Master Steph asks, Red, do you store all of your games in the board game cafe? No, my games. I've got a hallway as you come into my flat, and there's a there's like a four by two Kallax shelf, and that's where like say like seventy percent of my board games are. Quant uh, mass. I'm talking in terms of mass, not like number of board games. And then in my room. There's another 4x2 Kallax shelf, but but that's usually most store other stuff, and it's on its side, so we're using it as like a TV stand. And then one of those cubes, two of those cubes, um, I've got like loads of mini games and dexterity games as well, like Gavin Birnbaum's games are in there, I've got like four of them. And um, then I've got a bookshelf with just a couple of games on, and a little... Um, a little kind of kitchen island and I've got like a bunch of games I'm trying to sell so that I'm not really counting those as part of my collection but I sort of am if you know what I mean um, but in the board game cafe they have like a thousand games and they really don't have a lot of spare space for those either so yeah there's no way I'm sewing although I like to think of the board game cafe's library as sort of like my extended library because obviously I could just play them and borrow them whenever I, I want in fact we got um, Empires of the North one of the first solo streams I ever did was Imperial Settlers Empires of the North and um, that one I borrowed from from work, and um, and I, I it was fun. I liked that game. So yeah, that's that's where I stored them, kind of all over the house, <laughs> but neatly, neatly stored up somewhere all over the house. Um, okay, so I've got to get. I can get two stone, and I can get like five stone for what it's worth. But there's no point, is there? Um, so maybe I'll use one of these to maybe use one of these to. Um, I could shift it over here, and then just use that to gain resources. But actually, I think I think I'm better off deactivating some of these buildings because I think that they are really strong. I think I'll also react deactivate this one as well because I just want to not be like, st um, what's the word, restricted uh, later on by wanting to do a thing and not being able to. So yeah, um, yeah, okay, so that's good. I've only got one of these tokens in the board. That one is very much like a manip... I wish I hadn't built that there, actually. That would have been nicer. In fact, I built that one over that one. Yeah, that's definitely the right decision. Okay, so that's the end of the turn. So we get rid of these. And luckily, I was able to build all of the buildings I wanted that turn. So these come down here. And now I've got this building, which is the Grand Statue. I think we're going to see a lot of duplicates now because we're getting to that stage of the game. And there's only, like, so many copies of each card. Um, the Watchtower is new. This adds three swords, but can only be used to attack bandits 
Um, and that's interesting because that's another way of getting points that I've kind of neglected, weirdly. So yeah, I think um, I think that could be a strategy, maybe, uh, to make something worthwhile happening over here, because I still got two armies which are no good. So that could be an option, and there's only one of each resource. And then we've got the Great Wall again, fine. Okay, so now we roll the dice. Let's see what we've got. Let's see what we've got. Okay, so we've got a six, but it's fine. We'll we'll give we'll forgive it. Uh, <laughs> so we get that there. We got this one here. Reroll this one. That's great. That one's been rolled a lot as well, right? It's not just me. The one blue has been rolled a lot as well. Oh no, that's because it's not on there. Duh, silly Russell. And that's annoying. This is one of the only ones I didn't um, deactivate. But this one, that's good. Okay. Um, so now I have to choose. What's my goal here? Do I maybe I want to build? Um, the watchtower and have something so at least every turn I can get every turn I land on it I get two points which isn't terrible and it's worth two points itself as well um, so maybe that one and I could get that just by moving that dice on there um, uh, I could actually use this to to um, unlock that and use it straight away and then I could um, use the ability of any location in my city which is really strong so actually let's do that I'm gonna I'm gonna use that to deactivate Actually, I used that. Let's use this one because I don't want to use that one. So yeah, use that to deactivate. Um, then I'm going to use. I'm going to use this one. So you're going to do that uh, for each harvest row on this location. So I get two wood, one iron, and uh, one stone. So there we go. And actually, let's build the um, let's build the uh, the watchtower now. I'm really tempted actually to build it underneath here so I can use it. Um, you know what? Let's 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 take advantage of the cursed dice. Let's build that there, and then I can use this to attack bandits right away. And I can use. What did I just do? I, what did I just do? I used the I used the, oh. Wait, hang on. What did I just? Oh, I've got the dice still. So I used that to get the resources, and I built the watchtower, and I used that one to unlock it. Okay, fine. So. So, uh, yes, that's fine. I'm good. I'm good. I just lost myself there for a bit, uh, but I'm back. Okay, so let's use this one. Let's use this one. Add three to your army that can only be used to attack bandits. Well, let's attack some bandits. These guys are getting smushed. I'm going to get two points as a result. So let's take those two points there. There we go. That's good. I can use the ability of any location on this row, which means basically if I use that... Oh, wait. No, I can use that. I can use that to use this. Um... So I'm going to use this, and I'm going to use... What would be good? Oh, I actually didn't spend the resources to build that. Sorry. Don't want to cheat. I've got to make sure I do this right. Um, any location in my entire um, city, which is good, um, I could... Uh, that is a huge advantage of virtual games compared to board games. You can have a thousand games in your digital library, and there's still space left. Oh, um, and now since you placed the watchtower there, the red... I stopped being cursed. Yes, exactly. Like, I could bring the cursed dice back, actually, and that just gains me two points. But no, I'm, I'm punishing those dice. I don't want to. That's, see, that's a way to use real-life curses to your advantage. Uh, <laughs> Um, okay, what am I going to use? I could use it again just to get two points. Is there anything that's good for me right now? Um, I could use this to gain other stuff. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe just get two victory points again. I feel like I feel like that's really strong. I don't want to... I actually might... Actually, do you know what? I'll use this. I'll use this, um, this ability. And, no. Where do I want to use? Where do I want to use... Um, where do I want? What do I want to build? I could build that festival hall, and I could reward myself for having lots of resources. I'm not really that bothered about anything there, mind. Um, yeah, I mean, where do I want to use? I can use absolutely anything, and I'm struggling to think. Um, I could pay one of resource to get three of that resource. So I could just get lots of wood, maybe. I mean, maybe I could just build a lumber mill because look, there's still spaces where I don't have it, and in fact. Um, this row is going to be one of those ones I want to increase. So maybe I'll just use that to turn this into three and spend two of those to build another lumber mill here. Um, oh, actually, screw it. Let's build. Let's let's do this one and then let's use this one to build another lumber mill up here. There we go. That's good. I think that was a good turn. All right. Um, where where like apart from like um, I know Tabletopia has like a premium, but it's more like a subscription model. 
so you don't really own the games unless you keep paying them. But Tabletop Simulator, does it have like downloadable content? Isn't that yours forever? I always think that the negative of having these like subscription services like Amazon and Spotify is you don't own the music, you're just paying to rent everything, which is fine. Um, Because that's kind of the model of the board game cafe, I guess. But uh, it just seems a bit weird to not own stuff. And I think that's... I'd always like to own my own board games. I don't know how about anybody else feels about that, though. Uh, Okay, so we're going to see... Oh, the bazaar. So we could have another one of those if we wanted. We've got the manor again. We've got the church again. And we've got the town hall again. That one's good, though. That one's good. Uh, Okay, so let's roll the dice and see what we're playing with. Tabletop Simulator has DLC, which are a few games that you buy once and permanently have afterwards. That's good. That's better, I think. Okay, so the four... Well, oh, now it's found another place to go. That's that's annoying. <laughs> uh, the yellow six is there. And we've got the blue six, which is here. So actually, loads of resources. Um, annoyingly, if I um, had landed on here, I would have so many resources right now. None of them are stone, annoyingly, because I would have two iron. I'd have four wood. No, three iron and four wood, which would be loads. Um, I wonder if I can use this to to gain some stone. Oh, I could move that one over here. And then I'd have enough to trade with the trade ship, um, which is five points. I think maybe that's the way to go. I'm going to use this to move over here. And then I'm going to use all of them. Maybe No, actually, just use all three of these to get two of each resources. And then maybe I'll just use this one to gain a pass token. Because maybe I can use that. Um, all of the board games have to be created by people manually. So, um, by the way, I just, I'm just i going to not gain the resources because I've just got two of each because of the, the position. And I'm just going to trade with this trade ship. So another five victory points. Uh, all of the board games have to be created by people manually. Um, and can, all community create ones are free. So there's some controversy over that because I know that they've been kind of ripping off um, like real board games. I don't think all of the board games that you play on there are official. So you might see like a DLC of, you know, like a, like a Star Wars game, but it's not actually licensed by Star Wars. And I think Tabletop Simulator are never getting recompensed or compensate. The, the, the publishers aren't getting compensated for those games that are created by players. So while that is good for the community and the players, it's not so good for the publishers because they're losing out potentially on sales. Um, that's why I like Tabletopia's model a bit better because at least the publishers are getting compensated for their games and it's more incentive for them to actually put them on. Although saying that, I say that, there's, uh, they still haven't uploaded the final um, versions of Brass, which I really want to play and I know they have an edition there, but it's not the final version, it's actually an old version of the game. So yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Um, I don't really, I, I mean, I love the idea of virtual games. I just don't like, it's still just as hard for me apparently to, um, to get my friends together to play that. And actually, um, one thing I actually wanted to um, mention is uh, Tabletopia and Tabletop Simulator, but less so with the latter, are very good at being able to play test and create your own games. Because I'm actually going to do that tomorrow. I'm going to be play testing um, a game that I made uh, the second time. So that's kind of cool. And they have like, nice resources for that in the Tabletopia. They've got like different shaped pieces and you can put your own cards and stuff. Sorry, Tabletopia, but Tabletop Simulator doesn't have the best um, resources for that, annoyingly. All right, so what is going on? That red dice just wants to just jump between all the useless spaces. Okay, so we've got this one here. We've got blue five. We've got the white two, and we've got the yellow four. Funny enough, look, um, they they all three of those spaces landed on um, on on stone resources. So uh, yeah, that's not great. Now I've got five, ten, twenty-two, twenty-five, twenty-six. 28, 30, 31, 32, 35, 38, 39, 40, 43. So I need to get seven victory points. I think I'm good for that because as long as I get some uh, some of these trading or, or did some of these bandits, um, I'm probably all right, you know? Um, so actually, I, I maybe want to re-roll this and hope to land on maybe one because that will allow me to re-roll all of the dice that I don't want. So perfect. Okay, so actually re-roll that. I'll re-roll everything because I don't think there's anything that's on its most optimal space here. So I'm going to re-roll absolutely everything here. I love that. That well has been very... You could say that well has been well good for me or well useful. Sorry, puns are back. Puns are back. 
All right, there we go. So it lands on the six. We've got the yellow two, which is great. Uh, the black four, which is fine. And the white five is... Yeah, this is a much better turn. Look at that. Uh, most of the tabletop sim players also stick to the same games. Those being mainly Secret Hitler, Red Dragon in Munchkin and some other ones. Interesting. I did not know that. I think that um, those games, uh, again, it's nice. I just, I, I'm jealous of the people who can like organize and plan for like multiple people to go uh, in the uh, in the same uh, time and play the same game. Because I actually, to be fair, I have a sort of regular meetup with friends of mine from university where we meet, like we do a Zoom call like most most weeks on the same day and around the same time. Um, we get to play seven wonders and um yahtzee and stuff like that so it's very kind of light but we use like board game arena for that which by the way is good tom says as my dad says well 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 three holes in the ground <laughs> uh i your dad and i would probably get along if we met because we just pun off uh one another anyway uh okay so i am going to use this use the ability of any location in your city i could just re-roll dice again but actually that's not good so that one gets me more resources that one's going to get me um, one and two resources. Um, so, and I could turn, you know, wood or iron into like three lots. And actually, wait, let's let's play this out. So again, let's play this out. So let's do the iron and let's do the stone. Just because I think I can get to, get to trade well again here. I could actually use that just to get three of everything. Let's pay, let's, let's use this and pay one iron to get three iron and then i can use this um i could use that to just gain one of everything no that wouldn't i that wouldn't be enough that wouldn't be enough um annoyingly i don't even have enough to get uh all i could to oh i was gonna say i could you <laughs> i could use the one that lets me turn one into three so i could turn that one wood into three wood but i wouldn't have enough um, to get the 10 points, but actually I'd only need seven points, don't I? So maybe I just, maybe I just aim for the, um, for the, for the wood, uh, which is annoying because actually I, I could just use a lumber mill for that. So is there any better location? Um, hang on, six was an iron, that's a four. Let me, let me just move them back for a sec because I think, no, I think those could have gained me extra one if I'd used that. Would have gained an extra iron and an extra stone. Which wouldn't have been enough. Oh, no, no, it's fine. Uh, it's fine. I'm I'm happy with that. I think I'm just going to use the location to get a. Um... Oh, actually, what about this? Or this? Ah, oh, it's used up. If I use that and I and I use that location, I would get two wood, one, st <gasps> two. St oh, that's it. That's what I do. So I use that. I'm going to lose two points, but I could actually gain five points from this. So I'm going to use that to to mitigate that, and I'm going to use this to use this ability so it gets activated again and now i get to take two wood two wood one stone and one iron and now i have enough to trade with the the trade ship for the 10 points so yeah let's get rid of all of those um all of those apart from the one iron which i can keep and now i get 10 points so uh well i'm running out of uh <laughs> running out of five chip tokens here there we go so there we go. Uh, I'm on, like, I think I've won already, but we're going to carry on playing through the game. We're going to breeze through it now, though. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to build anything. Uh, so those go. These come down, and I think this is, like, the second last turn of the game now. So you've got the barracks, which is place a regular army anywhere in your city without paying costs. The storehouse, which is another one of those in the top row. A blacksmith, which is all of your... Uh, oh, we had that one last time anyway. And more barracks. So all of the uh, red buildings sort of like stay towards the end. Now we roll this dice. And we're just going to try maximum points here. Okay, so we've got four again. Brilliant. Got the yellow three. Got the black four. We've got the white four. And we've got the the five. Lots of stone here. Um, this one provides all of my resources, additional resources, which could be really good. Um, but this one gains me... Um, two iron one stone and one wood i think i could use that one yeah let's do that i think i'm going to just try and get to trade with these things now so one of those two of these and one stone there we go so i've got three iron already so if i can get two stone and two wood which i think i can um by again i can use this one to deactivate wait yeah oh you know what I think there is a possibility. I was going to say, if I use that to deactivate that, 
um, and then I use this dice to um, move this, I guess. Oh, wait, hang on. Wait, well, that was there, right? I could use this to go here. No, hang on, where was that? Five. I'm basically, look, I've got, I need to get, I need to get um, uh, two more wood and two more stone. So I could just do that, and then I could manipulate that dice to go there, and then use that to get that. But I could also manipulate that dice to go there and just use it anyway. So it doesn't make a difference, actually. So, yeah, let's take that two, let's take that two stone. I'm not going to use that ability. I'm going to use it to instead move this one over and use this one. So that one gets used up. And now I get to take um, two wood. Two wood, yeah. <laughs> uh, one stone and one iron. Which is annoying because I was like one piece of wood away from being able to do the massive trade there. But it's fine. Three, three of each. And I actually have some left over. So if I get a really good turn next time, I might be able to do it anyway. So let's see if I can find five point tokens. Where are you? Have I literally gone through all of the five point tokens? I mean, I'm not meant to be doing this well. All right, you know what? I'll just take a three and a two uh, and a three and a two. <laughs> so there we go. They've got loads of points over here. And then final turn. So again, not even bother building at this point. It's all about just gaining as much resources as we can. But then we just roll these. We've got a blue four. We've got a red one, finally. Uh, white three. Uh, yellow two. And black six. Okay, so we can get two wood... Uh, we can get lots of iron. We can re well, let's re-roll this one first of all anyway. Six. Okay, we can get more iron. Um, how much iron do we need? Um, and that we can use the ability of any location on that city, which could be getting more resources. So let's, let's use these two first of all to get two iron and two wood. Two iron and two wood. Two iron, two wood. There we go. So now we've got, um, we need to get ideally one, two, three, four, five, six resources which we can get if by, well, we can get four from that and we get two from that, but it's the wrong kind of resource. So, um, oh, but then I'd have to act deactivate one of these. I mean, I can get 10 points, which is fine, but I'd rather get, you know, 20 points. Um, so yeah, basically I'll take this off and I will uh, deactivate, um, wait, which one do I want? That one gets me two iron, but this one gets me two wood and I need wood more. So I'm gonna deactivate that I'm going to use this, and I'm going to use this one, so it gets activate, deactivated again. So I get two wood, two wood, one iron, and one stone, which is make again. Look how close I am to, to to fulfilling that. I basically just need two stone, but it's on the wrong thing. Ah, oh, I didn't have a pass token. I was going to say if I had one more pass token during the game, I could have gained the resource of my choice, and that would have been enough. But I don't have enough pass tokens, so I'm just going to have to settle for three of each. Um, I don't think there's any way I could have done anything different there. Because I gained two wood from there. Yeah, I would have gained... Yeah, I, I probably could have. I probably could have, but I know I'm going to win the game. And also the stream is coming up past two hours now, so I have to hurry up. So yeah, let's just get... Um, let's just... Um, actually, you know what? I can use this just to gain um, a pass token and use that pass token to gain a stone. Uh, so spend two to gain a resource, and then I spend three of each um, to get ten more points, please. And I did not kill a single bandit in that game. Uh, ten more points, let's just make sure I get this properly. I know I've already won, because I've already got 50 points here. Okay, so that's the end of the game. These cards go. Now we calculate the score. Uh, victory points. At the end of the game, the points are scored as follows. When the final round ends, each player counts the victory point tokens they have in front of them. So let's do this. Let's count these. So we've got 5, 10. Actually, let's do it here. 5, 10, 15, 20. And, yep, yeah, 25. Then we're going to do 3. So 30, 35, 40. Oh, 45, 50. 52 points in that. You said please to the game. Did I? Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, I, that's just me. I'm afraid I'm a bit scatterbrained. Um, they have taken and addressed the victory point values. Uh, oh, wait. And the VP from the trade ship and bandits cards they have taken. Well, it doesn't apply to me because it doesn't matter. Um, and add the victory point values of all the locations in their city. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's it. So I just now add, what was it? 
52, I think, was it? 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 52, 52, 55, 56, 57, 60, 63, 64, 65, 67, 69, 70, 73, 73 points, 73 points, I think we can call that a victory, I think we can call that a victory, um, all right, let's just switch it up so you can see me again, uh, all right, there we go, actually, I'm a little bit, uh, thingy, uh, bit like that, there we go, okay, so anyway, that's it, that was it, I uh, thank you for everyone that stopped by and watched this, uh, I had a blast, like, that game is quite good, the only problem is, is I still have that thing in my head where I'm like, just just exceeding a points threshold um, is fine because it's like a victory condition. If it had been like, you know, if you score 50 points, you are okay. And if you score 60 points, you're good and so on. Like, um, I know there's some games have that. But this one, so this is what the rules say in the solo game. So you're trying to get 50 points and if you do, you win the game. Um, if you manage to beat it, which I did, then increase the score to beat by five victory points the next time you play. So actually, I've actually been... Uh, thank you, Steph, by the way. I would like a campaign there. Thanks for showing this today. No, my pleasure. Thank you for actually watching. Because, um, you know, I do it for you guys mainly. Well, I do it for me as well. I enjoy playing the game. But I really enjoy playing it um, and sharing games with people as well. So, um, yeah, no. Um, so in terms of um, just some sort of wrap-up stuff... Oh, yeah, so anyway, sorry. This said this is uh, you increase it by five to beat the next time you play. Now... Does that mean I have to try and do 55 next time? But I'm already like five games up at this point. So I've beat at 50, 55, 60, 65, 70. So am I 75? Is that what I'm trying to do next time? Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Steph. You're a legend. You're so kind. Um, Steph, you are just donating to charity through that because I'm putting all my proceeds towards charity. So thank you so much. Um, and thank you for, you know, supporting this channel. Really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, the other thing I was going to say um, is... Um, uh, yeah, so I don't know how that's going to work. Like, do I, is that my goal? Or do I maybe even just try it in hard mode and beat it 50? It just doesn't seem like enough. Like, I guess beating it once is fine. Maybe like hard mode. So I'm not sure how I feel about, you know, that that situation there. Like, is that a good enough? Like, do I have to beat it by 55? Is there enough flexibility and I've just happened to do really well this time? And, like, what's the end goal there? Like, is it just going to keep going up by five? Like, what's the maximum points you can score in a game? Lots of things to think about there. Um, but, yes, anyway. So, in terms of stuff, um, I just wanted to let you know that I do still intend on doing a Paper Mario stream this evening, carrying on with the Thousand Year Door game, but I'm going to start it earlier on, hopefully 10-ish this time instead of quite late that I've done last time so if you're around for that feel free to check it out um the other thing is this Friday at 8 p.m British time I'll be playing a game online on gaming rules channels so that's Paul Grogan for those who know him and I'll be playing Macau by um I think Stefan Feld and I'll be playing that live on his YouTube channel so that'll be exciting Normally I play all games, but this one did not come on my table. Well, you know what? You've seen how it plays. Maybe maybe it's convinced you to play it. It is very much a different game when you're playing with other players. Because as you see, I kind of ignored the army thing here. Um, like There's a whole deck of cards I didn't even go through, which is the normal army deck. I should have pointed to that screen instead. So yeah, um, it's a very different game when you're playing with other people. So basically, yeah, it's different. Um, yeah, anyway, so... Uh, uh, what else was I going to say? Uh, yeah, so Friday 8pm, if you're around to watch that, please watch too. I've got a couple more games that I haven't touched on um, single players, including um, including The Pursuit of Happiness, which is another game by Artipia Games. So I actually might do that, make it an Artipia Games week, for example. Um, so check that out, maybe. And uh, yeah, other than that, yeah, I am still hoping to bring back Tina Chit Chat in a couple of weeks. I just needed some time off from it. Uh, but I'll be back with a vengeance and, and season two. Yeah, and also, finally, worth mentioning, I have a... Um, I have a, 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 a sort of like agreement with the legendcraft.ca, so that's the website, and I will put it in chat. Essentially, if you um, are thinking of buying a board gaming table or um, are thinking about maybe buying some board game accessories, this website, and if you use the code GIGGLES, um, you'll get 5% off your um, order. So do check it out if you live in Canada and you fancy deciding to um, invest in some new board game stuff because um, that's how you can get yourself a bit of a discount on that. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. Really appreciate all the times you tune in to watch me just blather on about games. Um, and yeah, thank you for all your support today. Um, as I said, next time I'll be online will be later this evening, but I'll also be doing a stream either tomorrow or the day after as well. So yeah, thank you very much. Um, have a lovely rest of the day or evening, wherever you are. And until next time, have fun gaming. But yeah, take care. Bye.